The Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies. Tape Never Lies. Starts now. The Tape Never Lies. The following show is for mature audiences only. Watch the tape, and when you see the tape, you know the tape doesn't lie, and there's just the tape doesn't lie. I know, I know we've asked you about Justin every step of the way, but at this point, especially after a game like that, what is your sense of anticipation for what he can do for this offense? point in time because we've been told it's going to incremental 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 progress is there going to be do you anticipate the giant leap at any point or where do you think he is as far as this offense at this point of the season heading into regular um i know he's a dog i know he he does things you know after practice during practice and uh and also there's things that he's shown and uh i've seen exactly what he can do and um so he's gonna shine for sure he's gonna he's gonna blossom he's gonna you know prove everything that um that everybody doubted him on, especially week one. That team passed on him, so they're going to have to pay a little bit for that. It's the right move. I mean, when you have this young of an offense and not just fields, you have a brand new play caller who's still, you know, installing the scheme, getting guys to understand like his dynamic, his body language, like he's on the sideline now. Like all these things come into play with why you're playing your starters a half. And certainly the defense benefits from it too. It's not just for the offense, but I think the offense and the operation and making sure that that is where it needs to be or close to it by week one is a huge, it's it just, it's just necessary. Um, not every, you have to take the preseason on a case by case basis with every team. I don't expect Aaron Rodgers to ever play in the preseason and that, you know, rightfully so, even with all the changes that they have offensively. Justin Fields is 23 years old. He's a young quarterback learning a brand new offense after having a different set of coaches last year at this time. So it's important and, you know, it's not going to look perfect. Like I think most games in September just always kind of like look sloppy to me. For like, I covered right. the NFL now. I'm going in my seventh season. They always look like a train wreck by and large. And I think it takes time. It takes the first month of the season to get into a routine and a rhythm when you're playing in the NFL. And so don't expect it to look perfect week one, but also, you know, you would anticipate that 27, 27 plays is not enough to go into the season with a brand new offensive line, you know, all new starters across the board, even with Cody Whitehair moving over to left guard. And then, you know, uh, the, the receiver group too. I mean, we still have so many questions about that group and what, you know, what, what's going on there. So yeah, it's the right move. 25 to 30 plays. He said they'll play up until the half. And I think that was, um, you know, it's not it's not something that most teams do, but this team needs it. So I thought it was, you know, a smart move for Iberflus to, to come out and say that right away and, and to stick with it. You can sort of understand that, but sometimes, you know, the way that I look at it is that if you're there every single day, like, you know, local beat reporters are, you're going to have a different perspective on the team than sure. national people who are maybe talking to people in the front office on the coaching staff and you know evaluating what they've seen in these preseason games like there's just a difference of opinion i don't you know and even back in the spring when there were a bunch of different power rankings that came out right after the draft and i know sports illustrated had them as you know 32 and a couple i think espn might have had them at 32 as well but it's you know i think you have to look at it through a realistic perspective that yes there are pieces on this on this team that you can build around. I mean, Cole Komet is poised for a breakout year. Like the tight end position is going to be cemented as a foundational piece in this offense. Darnell Mooney's a terrific receiver. Um, the jury's still out, obviously, on Justin Fields. Can he be that guy? And I know I am focusing only on offense with this, but 
that's not enough. Like we have to like look at it through like a realistic perspective that yeah, you have a couple pieces here, but you're so far away from the ultimate goal, which is why I think that national narrative around this team is so downtrodden on the Bears this year. And whether fair or not, they're going to have a chance to to flip that on its head or to prove that that's proven right. And this I really want to say this not as a question because I have a question, but I think it's important fans understand and I'm saying it to Courtney too. Um, football is a team sport. And when you have a culture where there's animosity instead of accountability, there's backstabbing, there's pointing fingers, and there's a known cloud, black cloud of whispers and other problems. Where's my next job going to be? A quarter of a young kid trying to learn in that environment is not put in good situations. So just having a culture where everybody's step for step communicating and understanding where the the course is i think is just going to be a huge relief for the chicago bears and surprise a lot of people alone because it ain't just talk obviously all the players are talking about accountability hustle even sam mustaver is being held accountable with his freaking loafing football it's a family it's caring about each other of course i can mention the amazing video breakdown content between father and son witty insight and cob quickies from the smartest man sharice manscape reads claudio off cue on his intros jackal not doing shit and even bradshaw making disturbing goat noises but what this network means to me is that we experience all those things i just mentioned as a family and that's what TTNL is to me, family. This network brings people from all over the planet together to share in one love for the Chicago Bears. We celebrate wins together as a family, just as we deal with losses, player injuries, and even personal adversity together as a family. That's what TTNL means to me. Remember, football comes second, family comes first. TTNL is family, and family is everything. The tape never lies, baby. Bear down. Draft Dr. Phil and the Smartest Man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Oh, yeah. trading up. 100. Yes! yes! What? Oh, my God. Here it is! Oh, yeah. The tape never lies. The tape never lies. You'll never know how good your football team is going to be until you play with maximum effort. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Open competition over the North and never give it back. Smartest man. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Cuts had to be me, we added the barber a moderator Up and down, boys got you double checking Sad sack scrolling like a full drunk texting Flexing on the truth cause you know they'll never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Jimmy What's the name? What we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain, all of the unchair The truth, you see, we laugh, we lie So there's no babies like Maybelline Straight to the truth with the we got a sad nerd, but he's not just giving 
give it nurse ass Car crash, big impact like trick sack Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man to feel back Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dip We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred Keep it up, one hundred Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man Justin Fields gets outside the pocket Puts that ball perfectly where only Moody can get it I guess I didn't hit the mark once again. Listen, yo, the Bears finished the preseason strong, undefeated. You can't ask for more than that. So the 53 is in, and we got a lot of waiver wire action. Coles is is not wasting any time. So, and we're not going to waste any time. So let's bring on, there he is, Shane, the smartest man, Marcel, and draft (laughs) Dr. Phil. (laughs) <laughs> Shane. Where, what is going on we're what's here up, what's up we, I don't know. you They're can't see us Claude are you black and your screen's gone Screen? yeah, no, we're all here I fucking I love all when I was doing the yo so, I think all the logos were in the way all the logos yes logos are important guys <laughs> and expensive the logo king Claudia <laughs> Keeping it 100. We're Disappointed live. with the yo tonight. You I went know. back to old Claude. I hit it was the a shake. Mic. I was all. I was, it was all. It was an earthquake. It was. Yeah. Did you hear it? Did you hear the mic get hit? No. Oh. But we man. did see the whole shake. You were. I felt Shaking. like you were having an earthquake over there in North Haven. Shane had his power out. He's out. He's back. Jesus Christ. That was crazy. What? Like. Three minutes before go time, two and a half minutes. I'm like, Jesus. I love all of Thank you, Sheree. (laughs) Yes. So much to get into on the Chicago Bears. But before even the Bear, how about Bullets? Bullets. Keeping it. How about Bullets? Baba. Breaking news. Bullets. Breaking news about TTNL. Um, we're gonna be Ron G producing these amazing great yeah. yeah, just a great job. Uh we'll play it again later on near the end of the show. If you missed it, if you're just tuning in, keeping it 100, the best bears show. We say show because it's very visual. You all m- can see Claudio miss the mark, right? <laughs> we watch tape here <laughs> and we watch Jackal's Tears. Or Bratcher's tears fall down their face. Whoever wins the trivia challenges. As Bratcher shakes his head. Why are they always picking on me? Give me a guard. (laughs) You got to play that. (laughs) But yes, TTNL. TTNL. How is is that happened, Shane? I just saw it. Yeah, I don't know. I see the one for... The other one, but the main one's oh gone. Oh my god. You must have oh, that. Let's hear it. It's back. Oh, okay. I there guess I go. didn't see it. Yep. I got my it. Bad. I got it. We're good. We're Thank good. God. Two double sessions today. Double sessions, right, Ivan? We went oh, twice yeah. today. Two times. Destroying destroying narratives as we do. I- I'm so excited because. Right now, I can smell the the lawns are getting a little greener. Football is in the air. The Chicago Bears are making some moves, and so so is TTNL. I already could see. We're going to have a battle. We're going to have a battle with the national media, the local media, as well as the blog boys, because the blog boys are out like Shane's crickets. I'll tell you right now. Shane's crickets are deceased. You took well, you took part in that combo. I don't, yeah. want, I don't want to do that to anybody, but I do want to kill them with truth. 
Is that fair, Bratcher? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <Very fun. laughs> so, yeah, we want to kill them with truth. Today, obviously, earlier today, if you missed it, we went to the tape. We showed what we do via Patreon. And I bet at least 50 of you people, you fans, were like, saw that headline and thought of this network and myself. I know Claudio did, or Shane, or Ryan Cox, because they sent it to me immediately, and I just fucking laughed. I fucking laughed, because here we go again. And We shouldn't we even let it bother us, dude. They're just, they're picking, and they, they, like I told you today, they were on fields, fields went out there, blew up, had a great game. They can't go negative on him, so they're just, they know how rabid this fan base is. They're playing everybody. That's why it gets them clicks. It gets guys from TTNL to do a fucking pop up show about it. That's what I'm saying. They're hey, give me, give me ammunition for truth. I thought you were gonna That's say give. I thought you were gonna say give me a guard or give me death. <laughs> it's more like this. <laughs> give me a guard or. <laughs> <laughs> He literally was preparing to imitate my voice. And that he, told me, he told me he needed a warm-up session. You know, he sounded like a warm-up. his fill voice on. Was he like, sh- rough, you know, get loosening his shoulders and shit, too? Yeah, he had the 12, 15 uh, guys come over and grab his balls so he could get go up a couple <laughs> octaves. Give me a go! Cars, give me cars, gets, <laughs> cars can get higher than him. Get in somebody's ass today. Exactly. <laughs> Bratcher. Oh my. It's an embarrassment, Bratcher. I got gotta be model. I mean, when I raise my voice, everybody hears me. They should. Today I got fired. I raised my voice a few times. Watching the tape. There's a lot of stuff that you missed. If you saw it, you I hope you understand. This is what we do here at TTNL. Pop up show, teach and tell truth. I hold everybody accountable. I even was coaching, and Shane, I know you didn't get to see, I was coaching David Montgomery on switching the ball hand and freeing up that left hand for stiff arm. That's the one thing in his game that I feel like he can improve on. But if you didn't, we'll play a little bit of that later. But go check it out, the pop-up shows later. Obviously, I don't want you to leave now. We got a lot to discuss about these Chicago Bears. Busy day. Huge day. Huge day. A lot of maneuvers and minutia uh, with the Bears, Shane. You and I talked about Alex Leatherwood. We broke him down um, prior to the draft last season. Yeah. Obviously, we focused in on tackles. We got Borum and Jenkins. Yeah, I've had Leatherwood a ton of went- people. I had a yeah, ton of people ahead. reach out to me just because I'm an Alabama fan and very familiar. Alex Leatherwood is a typical Alabama guy to me. All the mm-hmm. talent in the world. And he is a guy that Saban used to just destroy and be like, dude, we need you have all the talent in the world. I just need to see it. But he is ultra, ultra raw. He's got everything that you want. In an mm-hmm. offensive lineman, absolutely everything. It's just getting him to that point. I don't think he got the fell into the greatest situation. He should have never went where he went in the draft. I mean, he was severely overdrafted. Overdrafted. Yeah, in my opinion, I'm talking. You know, I had a second round grade on him, and I that would have been much better filled. But but what did he go? Seventeenth, I believe, to Vegas. Seventeenth I mean, to the Raiders. Added up. Add up another one to, you know, Mayock and and Gruden there. He's got the talent, but, man, he's got to be – Chris Morgan is going to – he's got that lump of clay, and now he's a dude that's getting – to show you how much the Bears believe in Leatherwood's ability is they claimed that contract. Right. You know, it comes with a little five-plus million guaranteed left on it, and that's – you can say whatever you want about the cap. Teams don't like doing that. Um, they they're gonna have the ability to have the fifth year option. This kid's twenty, just turned twenty three in January, and they they are going to play him. I had a couple of people reach out to me and be like, "Is this?" 
are they just gonna like uh set him on the bench no they're uh his contract dictates that he's gonna they're gonna put him out there because he needs reps guys when i when phil and i broke down this roster and we talked about a guy um about any veteran that is a little bit older if there was a guy behind him that's talented that they believe in they're gonna play it's just that's the way that this roster is i mean 13 rookies before they claimed guys today and you know you saw that they released uh phil who was the i'm blanking on his name the the other linebacker, linebacker thomas yeah joe, joe thomas. thomas he's yes. out and you're bringing in a kid that i think is gonna you can put up i think bratcher put up the list here there you go bratcher Oh, that. that's the practice squad. We didn't do the the claims. Oh, I thought you did the claims. Yeah, but get I up can, the claim. I think Courtney almost. Cronin has a tweet out there. Yeah, I got like him. Right. Eleven producers. Sterling, don't know about Sterling. Yeah, Sterling. Sterling Weatherford. Man, he's, yeah, he, Weatherford. Yeah, he Weatherford. And I don't want Weatherford wanna... was a safety, safety in college at teammate of Dominique Robinson. Teammate of Dominic Robinson, and. Clearly, the Indianapolis Colts thought of him more as a linebacker. A will linebacker is what you're looking at this kid being claimed at. I don't know. Maybe they play him as a strong safety. I don't know what their thinking is. Uh, but this football player has a nose for the football, an instinctive he, nose. And Shane, you had explosive. a tweet from J.J. Stankovic. Well, don't put it out there yet because we oh. might be seeing that a little bit oh, later okay. in the show but yeah i mean he and talking to ryan cox and, and cars earlier about this don't think that there's not things in play here looking down the line nick morrow is a guy that they obviously love if he can stay healthy you may have found a guy here and i know people don't want to hear that but they're not gonna. Well, you have to. They're exactly. You, I know exactly where you're going. They're not gonna pay if Ro, if Roquan thinks he's gonna get twenty two million, twenty four million dollars from the Bears. He's not gonna. He's not gonna be a Bear. I he's totally agree that with that. Every year, and I feel I'm hoping because of the freakish ability of Weatherford. He's super raw, but that's that's the benefit. That's one of the greatest things about this staff, Phil. And you hear it's not bullshit so far. That's what I like. Matt Nagy, all these guys. Yeah. Hey, if they're if they're young and they go out there and they, they're going to compete, we'll play them. And then they never did. These guys are practicing exactly what they're preaching. If you're exactly. young, you're explosive. You bought into the hits philosophy. You're going to play. Well, Joe Thomas, mm -hmm. nice player, thirty-one years old. See you later. That's what that's all about, man. And. It's the smart play. First, let's rewind back because I wanted to say something about Ryan Pohl's first offseason I felt was a little on edge for me because I felt like politics were playing in what he set, and that was keeping all his draft picks. Now, I felt like some of these other players deserve to be on the football team over some of the draft picks that – were kept that being said then today he comes back around and what does he do he removes some of these players and is adding other ones so therefore that puts me at ease this a bunch of these signings are telling me you're looking at a defensive end you're looking at the defensive bag a lot of these are defensive looks and obviously listen leatherwood for me, I felt like Leatherwood could be a great offensive tackle. That's what I felt like in that draft. Now, I had Jenkins over him. I had the kid from Northwestern, number one, and I got Slater. black. Then the kid from that Detroit from Oregon. Then I had Jenkins there in the third hole. So – and then I look back on these things and how I was ranking them. And here's Leatherwood, who I had a second round grade on, young kid, probably in an environment full of chaos. And now you're getting some clay in here with a culture 
that you're building and where they're going to place him is important because the Raiders did what the Bears have done to Jenkins and put him inside. Raiders did the same thing. So now how does how does this offense Morgan use this? How does Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham, how do they envision Leatherwood? That's important right now. I think he's going to be the right tackle. I don't see him as a guard. I th- I don't. I, I'm totally with you. Yeah, I if think If I was to the... play, Shane, if I was the coach, Jenkins would be the left tackle, Leatherwood the right tackle, Reef the swing, Borum. Borum to me is up and down. Everyone gives Borum this pass, but every time. But that's that's why moves like this were made, Phil. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. The the Bears Bears fans have been this way for eternity because you didn't have players at the on the offensive side of the ball that you could look to and be like, "Wow, that's settled." That's why I always point back to Marcus Robinson having what was it, fourteen hundred yards yeah. and ten we touchdowns. Sent it to NFL Europe, and, and they were everybody's cut. like, "Here you go, yeah, all right, we got." And then it just falls. You know, you lose one guy, and that's you can't. You don't have a sustainable roster that way when it's one and, and one and done. But, and I know I think it was Duke Mannyweather talked about this, but it's the number one thing I could probably pull up clips back when he was at Alabama. Saban was always screaming at him, "Your hands, your hands, your hands!" Because Phil, you know you can speak on this way better than I can. The combat with your hands when you're moving inside is infinitely faster. Oh my god. He was having problems with it at tackle. And you're going to put him inside. And the thing about it is, I can let me look it up here. I know I saw a tweet talking about Leatherwood. They Yeah, Leatherwood struggled as a rookie, but the Raiders certainly did him no favors. And this is from Chicago Football Connection. In four games at right tackle, he had a true pass set, which is uh no play action, no help from a tight end or running back on 71.8% of his reps. That's why I pointed down to my but guy just, Adeptus. Just to show you uh, a comparison, Jason Peters, 42%. Larry Borum, 46%. Billy Turner from Green Bay, 40%. Elkton Jenkins from Green Bay, 31%. Then he goes on to say the Raiders overdrafted him, changed his position, and then said, we're going to put you on an island versus Joey Bosa, TJ Watt, and Justin Houston. And it's that's the truth. That's, 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 Matt, that's Matt Nagy's philosophy. Thank you. Get out there and fucking play. Just we're not going to put you in chip. a proper position. He's going He's going to be better here, but it's still – he's going. He's one of those guys. I've seen it enough times. He's so fucking talented. But Phil, you're gonna do a breakdown on him when we get to fucking week ten, right? And you're gonna be like, "Ah, you just you have it. You're almost there, but he's he just got to get up over that hump." And hopefully, Morgan, hopefully Eberflus, Ryan Poles, Ian Cunningham can unlock that. Kids just turned twenty three. Are you are you guys looking at Leatherwood similar? I would say similarly to Tevin Jenkins, like where he needs that extra motivation, or, or at least from the from what you've heard from you know former coaches in Gundy to now with the, with whatever they're going, whatever they're dealing with, and even now it doesn't seem like the situation is settled. Do you think Leatherwood is similar to him? Is that is that a good comp to have? Because you're still trying to get the best out of Tevin. He still has uber talent, but is the, the coaching needs to be proper? You know what I'm saying? He had a he had a world win last year and and. In Vegas, they didn't put him in the right position. They left him, you know, out to dry for for a lot of the time. But is 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 it just a little tweak? Is it a is it you know, is it their motivation? Hey, uh, I wouldn't say a boot to the ass because I don't think Eberflus is that kind of coach. But some type of hey, you need to get your shit ready. You need to get your shit going, you know, yeah. in order to start, or else we're well, going to cut you. When you're when you're a first round draft pick, and <laughs> you get caught this early that's a fucking wake-up call for anybody it should be especially along the offensive line absolutely and i think that their deficiencies are different i think leatherwoods is more i don't i guess physical in terms of his hand he's just gotta he's gotta get his proper technique he's gotta work on his hands i think tevin is 
got all the talent in the world. I think Tevin has some other things that are holding Tevin back. I think the Tevin Jenkins situation, I have I I have no clue what's going on. I really don't. I don't understand. I just think it. Tevin needs to I, I honestly, if I was the Chicago Bears, I wouldn't put him out in any more fucking pressers publicly. Well, they, they went in and they looked like they were interviewing him in the locker room this time. Yeah, well, the, the locker room opened up, but I just I wouldn't make him available to any of that stuff right now. I'd be I I would tell Tevin one thing and make it extremely simple: go out there at right guard and fucking dominate and play football. That's all I need you to worry about. I gonna be. I honestly don't. I honestly, I get what everyone's saying. There's clearly a reality of Tevin wanting to be a tackle. He wants to be a tackle. He is the best offensive lineman by far. He is, and I laugh Phil, when just because I see you're the e, most I talented see doesn't mean that you can fucking handle it. We see it all the time. That's what. I'm, but if you put a player at one position. And you say, we need you there, big fella. Then you do it. All of this other minutia, we're outside looking in on. I don't, I don't get it. I will tell every person, you show me the fucking tape. Because I have shown it. And I'll show it again. Tevin Jenkins could play left tackle and be dominant. Just like the dude in San Francisco. That's how athletic this guy is. Now, to Shane's point, to Shane's point, What's going on in Tevin's head? Being challenged? I'm not there. But I know I wouldn't have done that. He would never play guard in my philosophy. He's so athletic and strong and big. I mean, the point of attack power that he has is impressive. It is. Now, he's embraced it in that conversation. He's saying, yeah, I got a, a inside. You don't have to. It's. It's a lot more to do, but it's easier because he's going to just use his bully strength and athleticism. So that I just want it for the record that that's what I would do. Now, if Tevin is somebody that's a malcontent, that doesn't take well to coaching, that is huffing and puffing, then yes, you put his ass on the bench and you leave him there. They move to the guard. Everyone wants to play their best five. But if you have a personality conflict, trust me, you never have coached. If you say, we just put your best five out there, that's it. No, some of these players need to be coddled. Everybody has to be coached differently. We're in a society with fucking social media. We got girlfriends. We got boyfriend. We got fucking catfishes. We got all this shit distracting what it is we're trying to do. You even got players snitching. Call in the office. We're too physical. <laughs> We're hitting. So, again, it's all of us guessing. All I can do is say the tape tells me Lucas Patrick at center. Cody White here, left guard. Tevin Jenkins, left tackle. Right guard, battle. Let me know. Let's put some guys in there. Right tackle right now would be Alex Leatherwood. That would be... Now right. you're battling on right. The, the tape shows you that, but we can't we can't sit here and say that there's not more. We, we don't we don't that's know what I'm what saying. He's, I'm, I'm right. just that's what going I'm by the tape. That that's a hundred percent a part of it. I mean, Tevin fell because of injury concerns, and I don't care when your fucking college coach comes out and says, "Hey, there's one guy in here that could make forty million dollars, and it's you if you want to be motivated." And then all exactly. of a sudden he starts. All of a sudden, he starts fucking playing football, and then he fucking walks away from it. Right. With five games left, that's a fucking that's a fucking problem. Tevin Jenkins hasn't played it. He walked away with five games left. I understand you want to build for your future. Then he and unfortunately he came here and he got hurt. Who's Tevin this? Jenkins I, I needs like... to play fucking football. Playing Who was in... this? Oh, Tevin got Tevin, hurt. Tevin. You're saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, from the draft. I got it. I'm sorry. But he totally he, boun he bounced early in college because he didn't want to. I wanna... always go back. I always go back to Kyle Long. You put him at guard. That was your fucking Hall of Fame left tackle right there. You fucking blew it. No, this isn't past history, Shane. You could 
verify this. I said it from fucking Absolutely. day one. But Phil, we're not at my my point is we're not around him every day. These guys, I don't think that they're going out there and just saying based on talent, we're putting this guy at right guard. I think there's a I don't think Tevin's mind frame. I actually bought into that one. What was it? The when he was going back and forth with the reporter, they're like, Do you feel like you should be the starter? And he's like, Oh, that's that's a you're baiting me with that question. And he was, had a little, you know, playful yeah. back and forth. And I'm like, Oh man, maybe this kid's taking a step. But then it's, ah, you know, you don't know if you're going to death. Of course, you don't know if you're going to be here, Tevin. That's true for every fucking. 99% of players in the NFL, very few people have the, the fuck you, what are you going to do to me in the NFL? Tevin Jenkins doesn't have that. So, of course, if you're not holding up your end of the fucking bargain, talent is going to be wasted. We've seen it with the Bears. We've seen it with a guy like Jamarcus Russell. We saw it with a guy, I mean, Alex Leatherwood. You can you could put in that camp. There's talent everywhere. Guys piss it away. If you're not bought in mentally, your physical gifts are going to fucking deteriorate and be shitty. You have to be fu- – Phil, you, you more than anybody says, you got to be fucking maniacal. It's got to fucking matter. Every well, I'm, single – I'm just looking down. at the guy play. At right guard, he is fucking playing his ass off. Right, he is, but I think – I feel just like – doing it on natural ability too. It's not like – He's played there. Right, but in the interviews, he gets all cryptic then. And when you when you start listening to him speak, it's like Tevin, do you want do you really want to be here or do you are you going through the motions? Because you know you gotta play you because you know you have to play, you know you have a contract to obligate. Is that I think I think if he was asked that question, Tevin should say, you know what? I want to play football. I don't that's all that matters. I I saw a guy that wants to play tackle. But we'll do whatever it is is being asked of him. Well, that's I the fucking problem. He's gonna it. piss and moan about. You, he, he came should. out and fucking said himself. Damn, must have he for starting to out there the shouldn't fuck, be. He wants to play wherever the fuck they want him. He said that himself multiple I times. I agree with that. But so I'm just I, saying, if, if he's if pissing and moaning and whining and say, I don't know if I'm gonna be here because I'm not playing the position I want to play. What if they told a, him? Be ready. You're probably going to get traded. Then, of course, he's carrying that out. Again, we don't know. The well, whole I, speculation or headlines. That's, that's the he's price a of doing business tent. in the right. NFL, man. It's a Not fucking, like that. What other team is throat. talking about their fucking line? With a kid that's out. unproven, Phil? It happens. He, this isn't fucking Tom Brady we're talking about, dude. This is a talented kid that's got some fucking issues. Of course. What are the issues? What do you mean? What are the issues? I He's been fucking You're... injured. Mm-hmm. He walked out on his fucking that... college team. He came what back he and walked he... out on He's... his college team. He left to go early to the draft. He help... left with games left in the season, Phil. He to was concentrate injured. on the draft. He didn't. Pl- yeah, he didn't play. Oh, like, so Mike, Gun- like what Mike Gundy. Picket, what Mike like Gundy? What what Mike Gundy said doesn't fucking matter. Then the head coach has no clue who's been around him for years. Mike, you're the Gundy most talented motherfucker, him. but. Mm-hmm. Tevin Jenkins needs to be fucking motivated. You have I to agree. play fucking mind Every games. Every player with does. Exactly. But Tevin's not holding up his end of the fucking bargain, especially when he's talking about it. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't be out here saying, I don't know. It's not my, it's, I want to play ball, whatever, what, what, what ha- I, I can't control if they trade me. If they trade me, that's on them. If they cut me, that's on them. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bust oh, my he, fucking ass. He's never said that. He did. He, he said did say that's that. on them. He, he said he did. He said that's on them. He said that he wants that to play way. for the Chicago Bears. He wants to be here if they want, you know, if, if whatever happens. But he's like, pretty much, it's on the Chicago Bears. Yeah, if they could want pull me up. Here. No, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm no, it's fine. It, it's it's up to the Bears if they want him. But I think it's it's really up to Tevin. I don't think the Bears it would is. want to trade a guy. I totally so agree talented, with that. So talented as such as Tevin. Pull up the if interview. it wasn't for his this attitude. From the the locker room. No, this is the one before that his his initial press conference, the first one with the uh, with the Chicago media after his like oh, little hiatus. Whole, yeah, that one. Was hiatus brutal. one you're talking. Yeah. That one was awful. Yeah, okay, but, he's, but- he's, 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 he said those things. He's like I, he pretty much. I, yeah, I want. I guess I want to be here if they want me this here. Is the weirdest thing. That's- Think about this. How t- this kid is in the NFL, right? He gets drafted. He gets hurt. 
Uh, right. I've been in the training room trying to get better, like just uh, health wise. And I've is this the first for, one? Ever since yeah. I've been out after the first mm-hmm. day of training camp. What specifically have you been? Uh, I don't want to disclose that right now. How come it's not up on the? Uh, Why isn't it up on the screen? screen? I'm not going to disclose that right now. That's all. What, what have you thought about? Or some of the talk so about you that the team is trying to trade you that you're not there asking. What can you add to that, or what do you want to say about that? Uh, just in general, I'm here for Chicago Bears right now. I'm here to play football for the Chicago Bears, and that's what I want to do, and that's what I plan on doing right now. Can you pause it? Whoever's controlling that. This is perspective here. This is a kid that's. In the media now being talked, they're talking about he's getting traded. So he's coming off of this and an he's injury. Talking about the, the rumors of it. Yeah, yeah. the rumors. But that's that's all right. That's, but he's twenty something years old and has never been in this situation. This is like a trap, a setup. And again, yeah, but should, he did I'll blame again. Chicago for not preparing this kid. Now put on what he said right now. That's what matters to me, not this. What were they supposed to tell him coming into this interview? Like he, we, they, he, I, already, I, he already how do we know? How do we? Already should have known. But, at, but well, Phil, how do we your, know? They to your point, how do you? Bullshit. How do you they know? Though, Eddie Jackson. How do you, we don't. Just like tackle. you said, how do you fucking know what they? How do you know they didn't come out and fucking they fired tell him? Soup Campbell. The fuck does that? That has nothing to do with Tevin Jenkins. Who's the? Who is the player relations guy with the Chicago Bears? But my point is the philosophy with Eberflus and with Ryan Poles has been if you are not bought into our direction, if you're not, then get the fuck out of our way and get out of our building. That's been the fuck. And if you see a kid come through that's not motivated every single day to be the best person that he can be. Phil, I'm not going to say any fucking names, but let's not pretend like you haven't been told that this kid's a little bit aloof. So I know that he's aloof. I'm right. telling you he is, but right. there's but a I'm reasoning saying, behind it. But that if, didn't start in Chicago. I know he's had a tough fucking go. This to me, if you want to put anybody on the fucking on the you know, hold them accountable, it's the fucking interview process with Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy and you know, that regime. Because obviously they have a fucking disconnect in their interview process. Well, with that, with that, I'm stuff. just telling you guys at Hofstra, everything, even at every, the one double A level, they prepare you for what is going on. This interview was a train wreck. Okay, it was. he was not prepared. He just simply was in his feelings. So I don't think it's relevant to this situation. I He's, wanted. I he's got to see. zero. He's got zero fucking credibility in terms of somebody that deserves. You know, he doesn't that. have enough skins on the fucking wall to I be totally like oh, Tevin. That and I that. Totally and agree. you know what? That to me seems like it bothers Tevin Jenkins. I want to watch the one in the locker but real quick. Room, guys, I think that this, I think one. this is important. I to me, it felt like th- this is just me speaking on a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Tevin Jenkins said, fuck it. This team needs offensive linemen. I was the 39th pick in the draft. What the fuck are they going to do with me? They're not going to fuck it. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. They're not going to get rid of me. Just like you said, he's a young kid. These guys do dumb shit all the time. Go he, out and play. I hope he doesn't think. Go then... out and play fucking fo- I don't want to hear that you're you're stressed about you don't know where you're going to fucking live. All that's go out and play fo- football and fucking dominate. And you know what, Tevin? You'll be at right guard in Chicago if you fucking. I'm do just watching what him. Is. And I, again, you're just projecting that. He is an odd kid. Michael Jordan's odd. He's yeah, still. You're projecting amazing. that it's just talent. I'm yeah. watching the tape of him. Right. Play but you guard can't say that shit just- off. So Phil, you, so in your philosophy then, that, it's just it's on. just fucking you know, domination we, on tape and nothing else fucking matters. No, That's I, bullshit. You're not letting me finish. You're projecting a story. One no, week not. he's playing right tackle and he's 12 times to 15 times better than Larry Borum. The next week he's playing right guard. Like let's watch this fucking tape of him against Seattle because he's absolutely fucking dominating. 
at right tackle. I don't know what is going on. What's okay. Happening? Okay. And then let me just finish this last point. Is this Jackal or Bratcher or Sharif? It's Claudio. It's Claudio. <laughs> Claudio doing it. Look at this guy. The kid is being moved around. He's being Welcome talked to the about NFL, in the media. Kid. Welcome to the NFL. Well, some kids can't handle that, Shane. So it's up oh. it's up to the offensive line coach or the head coach or the go between to kind of but you're set projecting the stage of expectation. You're projecting that they have not already done that. I don't know that they did. That's what I'm you? saying. So no, but you you said I'm projecting, so are you. You're projecting a, a mental well, health issue or something like that. I'm saying, Phil, come on, well, man. The they, fucking, they, they've put that out there. That's that's been known that he's that's, had. Some, I mean, some well, I'm, I can't say that this is what's going on with the kid. I don't think you help a kid by not being clear. That's all I'm saying. His performance on tape at tackle was outstanding, but then the next week he's at guard. Sam Mustafer plays like dog shit, and he's still starting, right? So I'm seeing mixed messages on the game as well as these things of accountability on the offensive line alone. That's it. Everywhere else I see things happening, but this offensive line is a weird situation, and this is the weirdest. But go ahead. You could play it now. You, you know, you just go home whether whether or not you got to be in the same place tomorrow or not. So uh, for me right now, it's a little uneasy. Does, does peace of mind make a difference for football? Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. You start settling down a little bit more. Uh, you start believing in yourself a, a lot more. And because you got a lot more trust in you. So are you look just like players looking at a trade deadline and they want to be here. You know, there's no there. Is there a date? in the next two weeks that you're looking to that you know, know you're here, you got a home. And, and just... uh, I'll say there's not a date because it's, it's still happening at any moment. Uh, it has been feeling natural to me, yes. And like I said in past interviews, the more reps I get, the more comfortable I'll be. And uh, working in that uh, telephone booth is a lot better for my career right now, I feel like. So... Pause it there. Working in the telephone booth is better for my career right now. I don't hear a kid like not wanting to help this team right there. I, I don't hear it at all. I think he's worried. Whatever I don't think anybody message. said he doesn't want to help the team. I don't think anybody ever said that. Well, that's what the media is saying. I, I think no. I think he cares for his team and his teammate. I think he cares for his teammates and the guys in the locker room. But there's a definite rift between him and Ryan Poles and possibly the, the offensive line coach about what he is for this team, like what position he's going to play for this team and what position moving forward is going to play for his team. Because guys are going to start looking think, at him as a guard. I don't think know? he's worrying about I think he's worried about being traded based on what I'm seeing because he's just said right now playing in a phone booth is good for my career. That's right there, that quote. That quote, but when you put on the tape, guys, this kid balls hard. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what I want to be. Where's his offensive fucking line coach? How about interview that fuck? Get his ass out here. Talk to, ask him a question about this and see what answers we're going to get from him. Because I don't get, I'm watching this and I'm seeing like, this is what you want in an offensive lineman. I mean, that's that's it. I saw it in Dieter Eislin. I saw it in him. And I'm seeing it in uh, Braxton Jones. This stuff just concerns me. I, I want to see. Listen, I've been around the Bears forever. Kyle Long is an example. But I would like to hear from Mr. Morgan himself. How about put his ass out there? and let, Because I heard Getze talking about the importance, and he's 100% right. That guard position on those zone blocking, they got to, as you saw today, kiss, get onto the linebacker or scoop and destroy. This guy's moving people. This guy's moving people. So 
I know where I would put him, but if you're going to put him in guard, let him know. We ain't trading you, big fell. Put his mind at ease. Why is this so hard? I've never seen every – it's always some chaotic He's shit. been at guard, though. He's been at guard for, what, three weeks? No. Huh? No. Two well, weeks? Yeah, two weeks. So but I'm saying been... I don't care about the position. I'm talking about his – you're staying here. We got fucking Ian Rappaport's punk ass talking about – and but they're he is still thinking there. about trading. You uh, think that Kevin. they're gonna? You think that they're just gonna miraculously move this dude you, to left tackle? No, no I don't. They're not know. gonna move him to right. They just brought in their right tackle, I, Leatherwood. Listen, he's gonna be. The I right don't guard. say. I think he's playing right guard. To your point, yeah, he is hundred percent. But I, mean, I think there's the hang up is the trade thing, security. If you rewind back, I think it's friend of the network, the old man with the TV. <laughs> he asks him, do you feel like, you know, you'd be secure? And he's like, yeah, I, a player that. But that he hasn't plays, earned that, that under- fucking right, Phil. He has earned the right. He, he has fucking not. moved inside. He did dude, what you asked him to do. He, so you're going to fucking. Oh, yeah, dude, he, you're fucking. He, you no, need to see that Phil. consistently, though. I think you need to see that consistently with, I'm with not Tevin saying Jenkins. You, you don't. Are they talking about Tevin? It, you, what you're describing to me, what this sounds like, is that Tevin needs to be told every fucking morning when he walks into the facility no. that he's the greatest fucking offensive lineman that I've ever seen because it's going to make Tevin fucking feel better. I think Tevin needs to the be fucking. This is the league There's of some... fucking men. And I think oh. Tevin Jenkins needs to fucking grow up a little bit and play fucking I football. I think the Ian Rappaport stuff, even yesterday in cut down days, when you text, this is such bullshit. There's no fucking way. It doesn't make any sense, right? That's what I he's saying in his head. That's what he's saying in his head. Why is my name being talked about? Maybe he's self-conscious or has anxiety. All he wants to know is that you're here, big fella. That's the offensive line coach's fucking job. But he is. He started for the last two weeks, big fella. He's but been big fu- fella can get traded. He was he second. was he was on the fucking trading block and now he's a fucking starter. You don't think that that's positive? I don't I, I 12 days ago he was gonna be fucking traded. Man. Now he's played this two fucking games as RG1 on this team. I mean, where when is enough is an, uh, enough with the fuck it. I mean, I don't get going on here, and I think it's obviously pretty clear. I don't think this is a oh they're ganging up on Tevin Jenkins or Chris Morgan and Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham are just totally fucking clueless and don't want to play this kid at offensive tackle. I mean, just go fucking play. Don't come out and publicly say I'm gonna I'm I'm worried He's about where I'm gonna be. Is it interesting? Then say, I'm not going to answer those. I'm here to play football. He can say that. Well, I, as the head coach or the offensive line coach, listen, big fella, again, if they well, ask you this shit, let them know you're here. Well, Tevin needs to needs a say that. That's what they told me. Why doesn't Tevin come out and say, hey, they said I'm here to stay and I'm going to be here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm the right guard for the Chicago Bears. But it's it's always something cryptic. Uh, if I'm here, if you know, okay, if, if they want me, it's you can't it's, have it both ways. This is a league of men, but they're young kids and they do stupid shit. We got fucking veterans spinning circles and fucking people selling drugs and well, driving who's trying crazy. to have it both ways. This is both shit. This kid just wants to know he's he's loved by the Bears organization and going to be here. I think it. He was the 39th weird. pick in the fucking draft last year. We this organization playing loves tackle, him. playing and tackle with a and new he got GM. Fucking hurt, and now he's with starting at GM. He's he's one of the best five offensive linemen on their fucking team, starting he's at the right best guard as at offensive linemen on their but team Phil, athletically. Just, he's the most talented. Right. Okay, but that's right. fine. And just because and most draft physical. doctor Phil or Coach Atoshin thinks that he needs to be the left tackle, maybe Chris this Morgan has and Ryan do with that shit. I'm doesn't just have saying, anything to do with that. Don't belittle don't the situation. I'm Nobody's saying, belittling it, Phil. But you're, you are because you're, you can't no, have you're it talking, both ways. You said no. I'm young, not, they do stupid things. 
but it's a men's league. Grow the fuck up. I never up fucking said the, they're young and they do it. stupid things. I did you not. Did. Phil, you you're the one. You're, I think you're more pissed off because you're, you've are you been – give me a tackler, give me death, and he's not I an offensive tackle. Less. No, I, I don't believe less that. I don't about, fucking believe I think, that. I think, Tevin, I, I think Tevin's as upset – as bothered by not playing tackle as Phil is. I think that is a real thing. I think Tevin was initially bothered by it, bought into playing right guard, but Tevin is still of the mindset like, do I want – like, first of all, do I want to be here? And am I going – am I trying to play for just for the tape so I could go ahead and move on later on if somebody sees me to play – as playing the position I want? I just think Tevin needs to come out and say it. Like, I want to be here for the Chicago Bears. Don't say any cryptic shit anymore. And like Shane said, just go play football. He's the, he doesn't he's, have to answer shit. Yeah, if Courtney Cronin asks him a question or any of these guys, he's like, guys, you know what? It's time for me to play ball. I haven't played enough football the past three years. I haven't played enough. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be the best Tevin Jenkins I can be at left tackle, at right tackle, right guard, wherever they put me. If I'm a primary backup, I'm going to be the best primary backup there is. thing about it is he was that. He was on third fucking string and he worked his way back up to becoming a fucking starter at right guard. The Bears aren't trying to deny this kid anything. They've given him a fucking wide open slate to work his way back up. And guess what? He's a fucking starter right now. That's being talked about in the media that he's going to be traded. Who gives a fuck about what the media says? We talk about that all the time. Then I'm that's a problem saying, for Devin Jenkins. Is a huge that's I a huge think, problem. I think that the problem is miscommunication with the Bears. You can't, you can't sit there from an ivory chair and watch Sam Mustafer fuck up left and right and say, "I, I put total faith in the Bears." I, I've been around them too much. We see it all the time. Now, you're a hundred percent right about tough love you got to go and do what they ask you to do all i'm asking is that there be proper communication bring chris morgan's ass out here and no bullshit ass two-faced promises i'm telling you i've been around these shoe salesmen coaches that have said hey we love you you're gonna be playing right tag you you got this and then all of a sudden it switches like you're lost in confusion. And when you're a young kid, whether you uh, agree with it or not, you get your feelings hurt or you're dealing with something personally and you don't know. You've already fell under that bridge and now you're being talked about in the media when no one really talks about offensive linemen like this. They do so, in Chicago, especially this year. Unfortunately. So I, you and I know he wasn't going anywhere. All I'm all I'm saying is something has to be on the Chicago Bears. They keep putting him out there. They chose to put him out there after that that fucking train wreck first one. And I don't think I think Tevin's they chose gonna, again Tevin to do it. Say, though Tevin has a say if he wants a, a little bit. No, like, they do not have a say. I've already asked that. Hey, they, they don't have you're a say going one. to the you're going you're going to speak in front of the media today. Yeah, he can speak, he, but he doesn't have to answer shit. Of course, he does. He can deflect any everything. He can say, "I just and came that here, first, pre- so I that first press." Re- he probably should have. Yeah. I agree with you. It was terrible. But now, just give this guy a direction. That's all I'm saying. If he shouldn't His direction be going has been to up, work, man. he's the, he's the starting offensive lineman for the Chicago Bears. They put in a blank. Spot on the depth no, chart. They talked. They talked about that. Phil. What was that about? It, it because they hadn't updated it, and they had marks. <laughs> they had right guard. Is they had it. marks. They had Schofield in there, and they took him off the roster, so it didn't show up mm-hmm. on the Adam Johns had a whole thing on Twitter about it today. Oh, but I'm saying these things get in play. Trust me, they're reading everything. They are. They say turn off the TVs at half. They're reading everything. And if a guy isn't good at at handling the media, the questions, it's up to me as the head coach. Right. Don't fucking put him out there. Just like Chuck is saying, they had Riley Reef at right tackle on that. 
So it hasn't been needed. We know that they haven't updated shit. And unfortunately, I mean, it is what it is. I All I know is based on tape, he's played with the starters for the last two weeks at right guard. I happen to believe that Alex Leatherwood is going to be the right tackle. Lucas Patrick will be back at center. You got white hair and you obviously have Braxton Jones. To me, that to me, that's going to be their five. I agree with Dub. There's a there's a way of philosophy. There's a good cop and a bad cop. As a coach, I knew I had to handle Claudio completely different than I had to handle some of these prima donna players. But and you my have to point do it with is the same firm hand. But there is a way of communicating to protect them as well as what you want to do offensively. I think vulnerability as honesty is the most important. I've been told in the past, now this is under Matt Nagy and company, there was so much bullshit laid at the feet of some of these players. <sighs> Two-faced, you're starting big guy, next day you're getting cut. How do you trust in that environment? You but don't. You don't but the, the thing that doesn't hold up for Tevin is that his head coach also was essentially calling him out for not being invested until in, you're talking they talked Gundy. to him. Yeah, he came right out and said it. Gundy. Yeah. Okay, Gundy. I said now that he's, like 15 he's... times in this debate, his name. But I'm just saying, he said there's one guy in this locker room that could make $40 million, and that's you if you want to buy in. To, to Shane's point, it doesn't help when you have a regime like last year's, right? Yeah, they drafted him. They were, they were high on him. But it doesn't help when you don't have the proper coaching to help a guy like this, to keep that guy motivated, to keep him, you know, not necessarily in check, but, you know, on his toes, to keep him ready to ready to play football the way that they need him to play football. I think, you know, that is – even though it was Mike Gundy in college at Oklahoma State, I think that him experiencing Matt Nagy didn't do him any justice whatsoever because now he's got to deal with a guy who's going to demand – demand that, you you know, you come in in shape that you run to the ball, which I see Tevin doing in games. I really do. I, I see Tevin now. He's hustling showing, down he's, the field. He's, he's helping people he's up. He's showing his potential. He's showing his, exactly. you his potential, he's what got the that, that he has. That's it's, been the, yeah. the biggest thing to Ivan's point is, and I talked about this 40 minutes ago when we started talking about the subject, Tevin hasn't played enough football. He's got to fucking just go out there and fucking play football. As the most talented offensive lineman that the Bears have. It's still not updated, the chat room saying. So there is some sort of fucking message being said. I mean, they don't do anything Phil, without some lacked, purpose. They've lacked on that forever. They're the, well, maybe Adam they Johns, lacked on helping Adam, this kid. Too. Adam Johns had a whole fuck. It's the social media team. It has nothing to do with the coaches. Listen, all I want to see is this guy being handled appropriately i've seen too many situations with the bears letting these kind of talents falter falter we have to sit here and defend a david montgomery for god's sake uh that to me is unconstitutional when it comes to football but i'll lay my analysis of offensive linemen against anybody anybody so whoever is in the chat I'll take on anybody with the offensive line and I'll show you there's no way that this kid I'm I'll bet my entire life savings he could be a tremendous left tackle. Now maybe maybe that's a couple years down the line. Yeah, though. we maybe don't that's know. That's what I'm saying. But this team are asking him to play right guard. And he's got to buy into that and I felt like in that interview he is. But he has some vulnerable truth that he would love to be a tackle. He feels comfortable there. There shouldn't be anything wrong. It would be a hell of a lot to showcase as we move forward in the season. And if you're just tuning in, this is why this show is the best Bears show on the planet. Look at that. Whatever producer put that up, Claudio getting a lot of credit tonight. The logo uh, guy. Right on time. It is. The debates are real. The passion is real. The analysis is real. 
And we're going to be showcasing these truths as we go down the line. I'm just saying I would watch Kyle Long play guard and watch two offensive tackles. Shane, throw a name out there. Charles Leno, John St. Pierre, or John St. Clair. All these tackle that couldn't even fucking function. How are they in the NFL type of stuff? And here's your answer. I don't want to be sitting there watching the Bears do that again. So challenge a guy, put him in there, hope, buy into it, but get this Chicago Bears offensive line. I'll tell you this, to Ivan's point, when I'm watching the tape, it ain't Sam Mustafa running down, helping fucking Justin Fields up or David Montgomery or Darnell Moore. It's number 76. And I I'll, counted it eight times. I'll give sprinting. Sam I got I got Sam once after you Justin got Sam got on a fight. But if you uh, watch, yeah, fight. if you watch the fight, it was Cody Whitehair, who's the first one. Just for the record, because I wa I'm watching this shit. But to Sam's credit, Sam played better in Cleveland than he did against Seattle and his one series against the Chiefs. He should forget. But his, I broke it down today. His screenplay is embarrassing. Embarrassing. Um, Stacks can go be in a timeout and take himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not going to fall into that. I'll just see you, Stacks. Sorry, dude. Go go watch your boy. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I love people go. I've never gone into anybody else's show. In fact, I've scolded anybody, Claudia. That went into another fucking anything and promoted this channel or network. I don't do that. It's cheap. It's embarrassing. Don't come into my chat and promote your show because I feel bad for you. I don't want to feel bad on my show. I'm arguing with Shane. I don't want to feel bad tonight. I want to feel happy because football is in the uh -oh. air. That's the thing, Phil. You and I have had back and forth forever, and then our DMs fill up and be like, you and Phil good? You know, shit like that. I've been watching the chat, and people are – some people are on your side. I got some dumbass that wants to fight me. That's fine. <laughs> I mean – This is – listen, we don't do any script, and it isn't planned. I was at the old network where this dude would personally plan to make me and Shane debate – Sheree knows, or he would take a contrarian perspective. Now he didn't share that with us, but he did it on purpose and to try to create these things. I'm not, I'm in my truth. I'm in my truth. And football, exactly. If you, you can't get, debate you fucking go. football, then there is no remember, show. Do you remember uh solar panel dumbass from the Brawl Network, Mr. Racist Boy Michael Brez in the hand? <laughs> Um, yes. you don't you remember him trying to talk down to oh us saying God. that Phil and Shane Mike just, Glennon, Phil and oh. Shane just agree too much. That's why it's not good. You guys have to, even if you agree, you have to disagree because it's better for content. No, we're gonna if we disagree on something, we're gonna fucking disagree. If we agree on it, we're gonna talk about it, and we're not gonna make up bullshit. That's a script just show. because. Phil and I were going back and forth tonight. Doesn't mean shit. It's <laughs> fucking football. It's what that this is exactly what goes on in war rooms when you're breaking down draft picks, when you're breaking down, um, you know, for free agency and shit like that. If you have a bunch of yes men in there, say, oh, yeah, you're you're right. Fuck that, mate. That's we're going to debate. Logan Frost wants. He wants a bunch of yes men around at UK <laughs> and we're in the UK. UK office, uh, you got fucking Khalil Herbert gonna be a two thousand yard rusher, the future. I've not seen any of this shit, but Logan will surround him. I'm joking. Listen, I always lo I love so many people, but I know when I'm standing on a hill by myself, and I remember it very well. It was people. I don't know. It was almost like a cult, as Jackal would say defending Leno versus the tape. I'm like, what do you think? I'm fucking Disney making this CGI with Miss Patty Cake, Patty Cake, 
walrus fall down. I didn't do that shit. He did it. Leno's mistake Char- pretty much retired Fitzpatrick last year. Exactly. His, his if, mistake. Yeah. Oh, my God. And and the same thing with all of all of this. If Sam Mustafer goes out there against the San Francisco 49er and goes out there and ki- just kills it, I'm going to be the biggest Sam Mustafer fan because I cheer for the fucking jersey. That's it. Phil, At the end of a, the day. I have a text on my phone literally from the Cleveland game. We were like, wow, I got to give Sam some props there. That was impressive. Exactly. And I put that play up today. I showed him doing what he's supposed to do. Just do that. And and listen, I was also the guy, and Shane has always <laughs> said this, even the fucking dude from the region, to his credit, have always defended. I was standing on a hill by myself telling all of you, Matt Nagy is a fucking shoe salesman. And I hate to bring up the old network again, but I was attacked. I was ridiculed. I was, I was, my father was even talked about saying, and this was on the air, as Cherie could attest, that old school football doesn't work, Phil. Matt Nagy has the new age NFL. And did I back down from that, Shane? No, no, not at I all. Continue. I don't give a fuck about coach of the year. I'm watching the tape. It's telling me this is bullshit. You're winning on defense, turnover, short fields, Jordan Howard. That's why you're fucking winning. And lo and behold, here we are again. I'll always go stand for my truth. I don't flip flop. I'm not going to change my opinion on George. What's his name from the fucking Steelers Pickens. Because Pickens has had a great preseason. I have my doubts about Pickens because of Pickens' personality. Now, if he turns that around, there's no questioning the talent. No questioning it. But I know what happens when you hit that rookie wall. How do you crumble? Just like Javon Wims. Just like Anthony Miller. How do you handle adversity? This situation here with an offensive lineman is going to be talked about, broken down. Hey, Trey, and spell my name right next time if you're going to run your mouth. Okay? <laughs> Thanks. It's by the a way, I am a, right. I am a therapist. Your mom lays on my couch every fucking night and we talk. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, but yes. Listen, I'm wearing the Beatles right here. I'm rocking the Beatles tonight because someone will argue that they aren't the greatest band of all time, but I say they are. I say they are. And I know Bratcher will be like, Metallica's the best. What is Bratcher's favorite band? Yeah, what what kind of music do you listen to, Bratcher? Listen to everything, man. Like, it honestly doesn't matter. What's the There it is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, what is your favorite band, Bratcher? It honestly depends on the genre for me. Like no, I love every no. genre. Best I band is a very nice dick that any woman would love. <laughs> Best band for me. Yes. yes. Uh, I'm gonna say I grew up listening to a lot of corn. I grew up listening to a lot. That's the juice, baby, yo, I feel the juice in my mouth, yo, the juice in your ass, like Florida orange, baby, yo, pull free. (laughs) What is your corn, you said? I don't really have a favorite, like, I just like a lot of different bands, I don't have like one. No, no, we're very economical, my family. (laughs) That's not me. Let him talk. Let him speak. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. That wasn't. I me. can see yeah. his feelings are hurt right now. My He's feelings pissed. are fine. I'm. I'm a hundred. What is your band? Man. What's your band? I'll One go with band. Metallica. That's fine. I knew you were gonna say yeah. that. See, I'll I was right. That. There's no fucking like way band. Metallica <laughs> is better than the Beatles. The Beatles, man. Look well, at the fucking library. Come on. Yeah, look at the library for Metallica, Phil. It's just as good. There's a lot of good Metallica songs, man. I mean, I it's it's a different genre. The Beatles. Like, the Beatles I can't debate man. two different genres like All right. that. 
Who is who is your favorite rapper of all time? Eminem. It's a good choice. Okay. Eminem. Yeah, for me, it's probably Eminem. And then after that, I'd say Tupac. I know you guys are gonna hate that, but I'd I'd say Tupac, and then Biggie's a close second or third on that. There's no fucking way Tupac is over Biggie. That's, ever. That's your East not Coast opinion. Freestyle. <laughs> It's not opinion. It's the That's, truth. Yeah, it is. That's your East Coast it's opinion. A lot of people yeah. outside of the East. All right. <laughs> well, so, drop me off hey. when I start. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the coast. It just has to do with the reality of. Talk to people the, from Chicago. They feel differently, Phil. I, I don't you think that. you can brush a whole stroke over Chicago. Just like I wouldn't brush. Uh, I think the best producer of all time with beats is from the West coast. Okay. And that's Dr. Dre. I agree. 100%. So, listen, there is no when, especially as a, somebody who was a rapper or whatever we're going to say about me. When I look at what Biggie was able to do, the reality of him being able to copy bone thugs one day and do juicy and all of these songs that just once it goes on it becomes a anthem he has more than them dear mama no i like tupac but Hit he's not up, even bro. in my top he's Hit not in my he's not in my top 5 what i I'll, I'll say it all day hit him up he killed him on that Tupac killed him on that. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Yes. All we'll right. talk about hip hop. Get back to yeah, get back to football. But, yeah. uh, Ryan Cox, I think, yeah, he just shared a, a tweet from Ian Rappaport, a few notes on the Chicago Bears. The Bears were the we only go. team in the NFL Rappaport. to put a claim in on Alex Leatherwood. Uh ex Jets. Uh, tight end Travon Wesco was the most popular as four teams, the Browns, Colts, Bengals, and Bears, all tried to claim him. He landed in Chicago. Who was the most popular again? Leatherwood? We- no, Wesco. The Bears were the only team in the NFL to put in a claim on Leatherwood. For Leatherwood. Because, yeah, because of that guaranteed money. Wesco. So, the tight end. Wesco had four claims. Nice. He went to Chicago because they were the highest. Leatherwood had one. The kid Wesco, I'll tell you, he's from the Jets out of West Virginia, correct? Yeah. Yeah. This kid can block his ass off. Oh, yeah. So when you see a sticky, physical tight end, uh, Wesco is going to give you that at the point of attack, that outside zone where the cutoff, you saw Ryan Griffin, if you watch the show today, where you're being asked, there's a outside nine on you you got to scoop but understand if he comes down crashing you're gonna have to deliver the blow and drive because if he comes down you want that running back to read your ass this kid has a lot of talent and he's very very thick he's thick i'm trying to remember he's much better blocker for me looking back at john gilmore than gilmore was this guy had this is a it's it's no wonder that this kid had all those teams because you're looking for that especially that outside zone stuff you want that tight end in there that's going to help you and he is not like just a blocker he's going to give you some something so i like that pickup in wesco it's it's an upgrade shane it's an upgrade Totally agree. Totally agree. And you talk about the outside zone, Phil. If that's what I don't think a lot of people realize is Cole Komet's, you know, improved overall. If he can't win blocking in the outside zone, then he's going to have a fucking problem. Him being him having the ability to block and then release and get out is going to tell the story for Cole Komet in 2022. hundred percent. I mean, I how totally crit- speak on it as a coach, Phil. How critical is it that your tight end can block in the outside zone? I mean, it's everything. It sets the tone for the action game, and it also sets the tone for for you being able to do setting that edge is important. As, and if you have a young 
offensive tackle, which the Bears are going to have two of them, we can already see, no matter who you put in there, right? Except Reef. If you're going to have two of them, you are going to need a tight end that's going to be able to handle those outside at a Joey Bosa, right? He's going to try to come up yeah. the field. You got to have that edge set. This is the type of pick that you did your homework. Your pro scout, your pro personnel, go get me the best tight end. Because when it came out, I was like, Shane, two tight ends? That's it? And we were like, well, Tongs has showed us some Tongs, Tongs has showed us some stuff. And he's in there at fullback. So here is was their plan. They went and found one of the best blocking tight ends that was on the market and they went out there and did it i i like to hear that you're acquiring those types of pieces that are going to fit your offensive philosophy now can he catch yes he can catch yes he can catch is that going to be his job no yeah friend of the show matt waldman reached out to me today when he saw the claims and said you know just kind of made a joke of it but he said as long as the New York Jets didn't ruin him. He was really excited about the the Bears picking up Wesco because he thinks that there's definitely something there. I totally agree with my guy Matt Waldman. I, I'm I was excited about that because I realized, okay, this is what you're doing. And I thought the kid, Chase Allen, do we have the Jackal? Do we have the practice squad? signings did anybody work on that like i asked i know yeah. bratcher put it up there you go Thank yeah tight end Bratcher. chase allen defensive trevon chase, coley chase made the the practice squad yeah yeah he was Brock. the guy that i was hoping thinking that they were gonna make and use this piece yeah or the edge so there you yeah, go yeah and and uh the the third kid that they kept i don't know why i'm tongs he switched his number today and he's number 81. So, so that's telling you that he's going to be that move tight end. Now, yep. Tongs is still on the roster, right? Yep. He made the, the 53. 53. Look at this kid. Yep. But they brought. And he was a walk on at Cal. Yeah. But uh, Coulter, they, they brought back Cars, wide receiver, Isaiah Coulter. Uh, defensive tackle, Micah Du Treadway. I've, there's some things like that he's that done kid. that I've been, yeah, totally, totally agree. Uh, everybody knows Dieter Iselin, running back. I'm I was love happy that to see, guy Iselin. Yep, I was happy to see uh, Evans brought back onto the practice squad. I think that there's some talent there. Another guy, Demarcus Gates. Uh, he he's an explosive kid. Yeah, I um, like this kid. Thomas Graham. That was interesting that there was no IR there, but this is the second year in a row that he has been cut in final cutdowns, and nobody. Nobody has claimed him, so they bring him back. Uh, Devontae Harris. Devontae Harris is the name right here. This is a guy that I felt like could possibly make the 53. They have him listed at safety, so it's showing his versatility. Um, This kid impressed me in the Cleveland game a lot. Um, This is somebody we're going to have to keep an eye on as – as you guys are getting to know, especially when COVID hit and everything was transpiring, where's that guy with the Snowden bet, Shane? Remember, he was going to come back. You're full of shit. Snowden's making the 53. Oh, yeah. I forget who that was. I think that was a patron. So they left. Might want to give him some, give him give some, some love. Shit. Give him, give him a hug and a care I'll bear. Give him a hug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lean to the, Lean back for, for but pick guy. Simmons. Yeah, Nathan Peterman. I just I don't know. I know I'm with you. Knows the system. I would I cars had a good point. You know, the, the practice squad guys rarely work out, but that that doesn't mean that you stop looking. I'm always funneling through these guys. Bring there he is in. wrong again, Shane, just to cut you off. It was Logan me, Frost. Phil. I didn't talk like that. Yes, you did. <laughs> you don't know anything, Phil. Snowden's good, just like Tupac. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me get the biggie library, juicy and hypnotize alone. End of story. And then we'll move on. Sam Kamara, Shane. <laughs> yeah. This kid is a story in above itself, brought on by 
Ryan Pace. Body type, not what you expect. Not beautiful. Small, <laughs> smaller. <laughs> this kid keeps battling. Sam Kamara. I'm pulling for this kid. Sam Kamara. Now, two administration. He's in there. And I'm interested. But to go back to your point, I'm sorry. I just wanted to give Sam some, some love here. To your point, Nathan Peterman, Shane. I think you made a great one. He doesn't move the fucking needle towards what it is you have with Justin. Yeah, to Fields. me, it's to me, it's just the and and maybe he's built up a rapport uh with Justin and and Trevor, you know. Uh, which I don't know. I just I'm always in the like I look at the I I know I always talk about these this team, but the Philadelphia Eagles are always churning yes, over quarterback they they claimed ian book today out of new orleans who i think i'm not a ian book fan in terms of quarterback but still it just you bring these guys in on the practice squad you check them out maybe there's one or two things that you like and you think that you can unlock you know three or four other things i just i agree i i love the philosophy of of just always looking for that position and especially with the expanded practice squad 16. to 16 and they have 14 i i just i would take a chance on a guy but they they have different thought process there this to me is probably more about justin fields and surrounding him with ultimate knowledge of the offense and of the nfl and and, and right. stuff like that but still with a 16 man practice squad I, I wouldn't have any problem having two down there every week i ask you guys Stop loafing. Hustle to the line. Touch the line like Jackal would. If anything I could say about Chris Jackal, he is not a loafer. He is not a loafer. Touch the line when you're doing your gassers. I'm asking you to hit the like button like Keys Guy. Smash the like button. Share the show. Let everybody know what's going on. Whether you agree with me about Biggie or Tupac, doesn't fucking matter. What matters is football right now. I don't know why Fat Boy Gotti's comments up because it sucks. <laughs> but we continue to talk about football. <laughs> and let me just say this. One more bring that practice squad pick back up. Uh, I pig just, Simmons. I just took it down. Yeah, just talk about it. I, I took it off because we're listen. Here's another guy. Some other stuff. Yeah. Watching pig play guard and then move out to left tackle and show me some fire in his his ass i see why you you kept him i i was i came away watching cleveland and i circled him as somebody we would talk about and sure enough he's on the practice squad and i'm i'm excited about this kid because i want to see See what he is going to bring to the table. Now, we're talking about the practice squad first, guys. Obviously, cuts have been going in the NFL. We, if you just <laughs> everybody's in, been we trying to direct the show gym. from the chat, yeah. I'm like, it's a fucking what four hour Deesh? show. We'll get there. Deesh? What about God, Deesh? Damn. What about what about the linebacker? <laughs> we are going to get into that. Dane Sansenbacher, I believe, is running for Congress somewhere now. Are you making I have up? no clue what Dane Sanzenbacher is doing now, but I was a fan of Dane Sanzenbacher. He made some plays. Remember? Made some plays. He was I'm still. He I'm was still Tanner Gentry before Tanner Gentry was Tanner Gentry, <laughs> right? Tanner. <laughs> Tanner got cut by the Bills, Bratcher. He's back on the practice squad. Interest. He's back with the Bills. Yeah. He's made a career in practice squads. How many years of practice squads can you have? I feel well, like he's been Trayvon on the Coley is six years in the league. But he hasn't been on the so, practice. Like, yeah, doesn't there so. like a practice squad? And I I think so. One of you guys check that rule up because I'm interested in that. Now that they've ex expanded it to 16, I would not I would like to know what is the cap limit because Nathan Peterman has when was he drafted? He was in the Mitch draft, right? I or was it the year before the only thing that I remember about Nathan Peterman was 
I, when we were at the other network, I think we had Greg Gabriel on. He was like, I'd have no problem pulling the the trigger on him in round two. And I just, you know, I know he knows a lot more about prospects than I do, but I just, I remember at the time, Phil, you and I were like, oh, God damn. I hope the Bears don't do, I hope they don't do that. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Nathan Peterman. I didn't dislike him this off season, right? But I did dislike Tyler Bray sitting on the fucking practice squad. I fucking yeah. hated that to Shane's point. I wanted for the record to see drafted. what was that kid from San Jose State that we had? Um, yeah, he I went to the Miami to, Dolphins. He went to the, yeah, exactly. I wanted yeah. to David Fails. Thank you, yeah. Cody. David Fails has the worst name for a quarterback. <laughs> David, you, you might as well have David Interception as your name, but <laughs> that's the only name worse than Fails. But I wanted to see what that kid had. We never got to see these things, but I digress on that. I, I think it's an important point about these quarterbacks. Uh, Sanzabacher's a loan officer now. I know uh, Ivan's looking for a house, Dane. Maybe you can help him with a mortgage. But anyway, I digress again. Jackal didn't like that joke. He does. Type fast. Players with no NFL experience, zero accrued seasons. Players who were active for fewer than nine games during their only accrued season. Up to 10 players may have no more than two accrued seasons. Up to six players may be signed without any limitations on earned seasons. So let me spell this out for football for dummies here. A player with no NFL experience. Oh, and there's another piece. Up to four players who have accrued more than two NFL seasons. So we have to be like a mathematician to understand these cap limit to get into the amusement park. That is the NFL. Players with no NFL experience. So a rookie, just, just drafted, undrafted, whatever. They never played. They can make it. Players who were active for fewer than nine games. So last year, a guy that was a rookie, whatever. Any guy, guy could have been in the league four years, failed out of camp four times. He's accrued no more than nine games. He can go on it. Up to 10 players may have no more than two accrued seasons. So you can go up to 10 out of the 16 that have two years experience. They've played, they've started, but you know what? They didn't survive the final cuts here, but we want to keep them. We can put them on there. And then up to six players sign without any limitation. That's where the Coley and Peterman and whoever the heck else they decide to put on the practice squad. Peterman was drafted in the fifth round of the 2017 draft by the Buffalo Bills. Yep. There you go. There you go. 2017 draft, Buffalo. Wouldn't take him, I tell you that. But. I didn't dislike Nathan Peter. I disliked Snowden's loafs. I think people are way back in the show and just <laughs> commenting on that. But that's the truth. Snowden loafs, Snowden's talent, his ability. Worse than the loafs was his lack of a killer instinct. Like Logan might like that. I don't in football. I want you get to that edge. You bend and destroy there isn't that on Mr. Snowden. And that's why the NFL is what it is. Kamara has that. He just doesn't have Snowden's God-given size, speed, athleticism, and everything else. Will Tunga find his way back on the practice squad, Shane? I guess he could. I mean, I like I like Tonga from what mm -hmm. I saw. Of him, I, I thought he got too. in a little. I thought he got in a little bit better shape. We were praising the guy up uh, the other night when you and I were breaking, you know, some stuff down and did our our roster back and forth. But I was, hey, we both know what the the body types are that they're looking for in in this defense and Eberflus and I mean Armand Watts. I 
I think that the Bears have unearthed a, a guy here that's going to make Bears fans pretty excited. I mean, limited time in Minnesota. And don't forget, why did he get let go in Minnesota? They're undergoing, they're transforming into the Vic Fangio type 3-4 defense. So, again, the body types are, are different than what, you know, what the Bears are looking for now. I love all that. Okay. Absolutely. And um, that wasn't wedged in there or anything. Yeah, right. But um, no, he he's, he's a guy that fits. And him in limited time <laughs> had about five sacks in Minnesota last year. So he's a guy that I, th- I think he's going to come in and he's going to – the Bears needed depth. I, they got rid of a lot of guys on this defensive line. And I think he's they a guy – They're looking for three technique. This guy, to your Absolutely. point, yeah. they're changing a philosophy. What did the Bears do when they opened up free agency? They went out and tried to sign the Jedi, Larry Ogunjobi, Obi-Wan Genobi. They didn't get it. Obviously failed to fit. We all know the story there, but we know the importance of it. And Justin Jones, albeit good player, is he great? I don't know yet. Justin's going to define that. But this kid, to Shane's point, isn't a fit in that 3-4. He's not going to play the nose. They're not going to play him in a five technique. He's a penetrator. He's slippery. And he gets off the ball. He's got great get off, as Brian Pace would say. Thanks, Ryan. (laughs) A great get off. So you look at it. I'm, I'm excited about this guy, Shane. We start... The waiver claims story right there. Yeah, and they're it's, not they're not they're not done, man. No. <laughs> this you're gonna see the bottom end of this roster flipped over two, three, four times. I mean, that's gonna be a constant, especially with the Gangsters, first... what's so guy? <laughs> what's up with the forced fucking drops tonight? <laughs> I have no idea. That was my fault. No. I apologize. Mom, oh. I will take the full blame of that and not blame Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking enough blame. But yeah. Claudio ahead. hasn't checked his DM that I sent him yet, though, I see. I've been looking down <laughs> at the bottom of the screen. I sent it to him 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you're getting you're going to see a lot of movement at the bottom half of this roster as we go. Shane, I wanted to ask you, is it high time? One of my notes that I wanted to remember for tonight, I'm going to wedge it in here. But I think it's important as you talk about the bottom end of the roster, the thoughts on 53 guys dress. Dress 53. They always go down inactive. Yeah, we've, are we we've done with them. this bull? When is when is this going to change? I don't think they'll do. It. I mean, I, if you're, you're you're paying these guys either way, I don't understand why it's that big of a deal just to fucking dress the fifty three. You know what I mean? And you want to preach safety and exactly. and all of that, then then give these teams some some extra. I don't understand the philosophy. If you're going to have your your fifty three man team and a 16 man practice, practice squad, squad why do you yeah. have to make seven guys inactive on on game day it's crazy that's my point today looking at the 16 man practice squad i'm like why because me and you every week and again it was john fox and matt Nagy. yeah we would die a death <laughs> waiting for the inactives like oh my fucking god they didn't activate ridley after ridley showed up last week in the receiving core in crucial situation oh my god they didn't activate this per it would be every but week but that's a classic case right there of like what we were talking about earlier guys with talent i was a big riley ridley fan i was banging the table for him to to take him in that draft in round four but he went out and made some plays when he got a chance but he he didn't get picked up by anybody i think the giants went out and tried him out but he 
when he was gone in Chicago, he was just gone, gone. That was it. Had a couple of workouts, and that's it. That's oh. it. You don't if you're want not, it? If you're not invested, NFL's got no time for you. You're on the air, baby. You're on. You did it. You did it, baby. Right now, what are the odds that Oh, I'm not going to say. I don't want anybody's feelings. There's hurt. hope, guys. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope for the Chicago Bears. We're we're talking about some of the additions. Now, everyone's asking us. And we did start out the show talking about that kid from the Miami of Ohio. Teammate of Dominique Robinson. But apparently a lot of people are just catching up to the show. And they're just fans. Shane. I'm just a fan. I'm not a football. They're just fan. So I love the addition of this kid. Well, let's do. You want to do the do the, the tweet segment? segment because there's the, he's tied into it, and okay. then after we're done with that, we can. So we talk talked on about him. the tight end. Mm -hmm. Okay, we talked about the defensive tackle from Minnesota. Shane is going out on a limb and saying, guys. You're going to like this kid. He's going to be a fit in what Eberflus wants to do at the three technique. So put that in your pocket for now. Now, brought to you by Cherie's Lawn Care. <laughs> it's the dumbest it's tweets of the week. Yet. Oh, it isn't? Okay. Sorry. I jumped the gun, Cherie. <laughs> Dumbest tweets of the week. Dumbest tweets, Claudio. There we there go. There he is. Each Look and every that. week. Look at Claudio stepping up. Jackal's nowhere to be found. Claudio's He's getting having computer issues and is currently rebooting. Tell him, Bratcher. That's a terrible excuse. Tell him, Bratcher. Not going to go down to his level. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you should be left. here on time, sir. On time. All <laughs> show. <laughs> yes, each Brat and every week. some bombs. Brat Bratcher. Proud of him. Late pickup. Late pickup in the waiver claims. Um, Every week, we look as the season kicks off, and we're right on the cusp of it. Starting to smell that grass, as Claudio loves Shane scours the Twitter sphere for those tweets that are so dumb, so ridiculous that we have to put it on the show. Now, don't send him your tweets. Yeah, don't. Claudio, Claudio can Especially your own. <laughs> Especially your own. And, and Logan let... Frost is famous for this. No, oh my. I went through a phase there where. I had people sending me their own tweets, content, just in case you need something. Yeah. Just in case you need some content. She yeah. agrees with the decisions with, that we've made. Let me make a public <laughs> statement here, too, about this. This is one more thing that fucking bothers me. Whenever Bears news breaks, I instantly get 40 fucking DMs oh my telling God. me what the Bears news is. And I'm like, guys. I have Twitter just like you do. <laughs> Sometimes I even get it before you guys. Who knows? But you guys don't need to DM me. No. Nope. You don't need every to do seven it. minutes. Oh my god! I, my, I'm getting the one. I know you probably know this today. already. Yes. I know you probably know this already. Yeah. It's real quick. I'm like, oh my god. Oh look, holy shit! The Bears hired Matt Eberflus. No. Thank you. I would have had no fucking clue. I was That's waiting for bullets to text me in 2028 and alert me of the fucking news. Who fuck yourself? <laughs> I probably I, just pissed everybody off. No, I actually enjoy it. I, I really do. Because I wonder if they're doing it purposefully and I just laugh. Like, do you not know me? And then I get pissed, though, when Ryan Cox... Because he's my go-to with Twitter. Because Shane has been he's the, too busy. Ryan Cox seemingly gets the the news the, 
the quickest. I and he I would feel normally like be, would send this to me, but now he's like, I'll be busy at work and cars and Ryan today were all fucking seven thousand texts deep, and I didn't oh scroll God. back seven hours, and then I shared some news with them. They're like, "Look at this fucking asshole!" You know. They're so rude to me sometimes, those they guys. Are. Don't be rude so to Shane. <laughs> Come on. No, Ryan, I might have to replace you with somebody else who's on Twitter. Because Shane used to be, like, on point. He's still good. But I need that. You know how a shortstop backs up the second baseman because he's a talent? Or the second you got, I need a backup. What, what, you and the baseball analogies. I just got I to gotta help you out sometimes. Listen. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he, they're, they're, I, I, Listen, it's, it's, it's hard. I need sometimes. someone. Does the catcher back up the first baseman on a bunt? Jesus. What do they do? Uh, let's get to the tweets. How about Just that? Just somebody step up and be the backup Twitter. Share me. It feels like, news. did you see the Utah Jazz turn that double play tonight, Ivan? <laughs> <laughs> How about those Dodgers? Nope. <laughs> Listen, I don't care about baseball. I was just give me a backup, not Peterman. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do it every week. Find the dumbest tweets and we do it a little bit like this. I need a little volume, Claudio. I know your computer. Okay. Oh yeah, Sharif. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I talk, you play the I don't give a fuck drop. Yeah. <laughs> He's the Hurry up and do it. Come man. on. Come on. <laughs> I haven't done it once tonight. <laughs> He's never been cheap. He'll always donate to a hobo. He even spent buku cash on every fucking single one of Claudio's logos. He's the smartest man. And these are the dumbest tweets of the week. They are for sale, by the way, because they are unused. So we will be having a logo sale here pretty soon. Yes. Yeah, so we went into the way, way, way back machine for some of the dumbest oh. tweets. And they came in very, very handy and obviously were relevant yesterday when the news broke. I saw somebody, I think, was just trying to instigate me in the chat saying that i was a huge kellen mond fan which i don't know what the fuck they were talking about that was nonsense but um what bring this one up chris sims, sims. top 40 quarterback countdown from last year you see up top patrick <laughs> mahomes josh allen aaron Rodgers. have no problems with that deshaun watson russell wilson lamar jackson kyler murray matthew stafford then when we look over to the right-hand side, Jimmy Garoppolo, Big Ben, Ryan Fitzpatrick at number 23, Taysom Hill Taysom at number Hill. 24. I don't know if I'm more pissed number, at Taysom Hill or right. Tom number Brady 20, being 10. You number can't put 29, him over Winston either. Yeah. Number 29, Andy Dalton. That was when he was with the Bears. But let's go down to the bottom here, see if we ne notice anybody. Number 39. Yeah, but number 39, Justin Fields. Number 38, Kellen Mond, who Adam Hogue. 37. Hoag 37. Kellen, what? Yeah. Who Adam Hogue drafted in round one, had the Bears trading back up for Kellen Mond to get that fifth-year option on him. So that was <laughs> that was great. But uh, Chris Sims, man. Holy Sometimes you just tweet shit out to get clicks. And, he didn't even tweet and, this, Shane. He like prepared it. Oh, he Close went scene. everywhere he though. Yeah. He was he was on every fucking show. He was he was tweeting shit out. But this was the this was the the Chris Sims unbuttoned. But um, yeah, Jesus, Justin Fields thirty nine and Kellen Mond thirty seven. Oh my god! Interesting, interesting. Zach Wilson before he even threw a pass, number twenty seven. Over Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> Zach Wilson. 27. Yeah. 27 for Zach Wilson. Coming in Sam Darnold number 19. Cam I'm Newton, more number pissed 
Tom Brady's 10. Like, go yep. smack yourself for that. Like, come on. Yeah. So, Chris Sims. Sims. You are one of my dumbest. Oh, there's so. more. Yeah, there's, there's more. two. Two dumb and two that should make us happy. So, let me throw this next one up here real quick. And this is just me taking some swipes at our, you know, purple headed fuck friends from the, the north, the Minnesota Vikings who drive me fucking crazy and think that they're an elite team and Super Bowl contenders each and every year. This was sent out on April 30th, 2021, right after Kellen Mond was drafted. Kellen Mond will end up being better than Justin. There Fields. they are. Ooh. Yeah, is that to the their dude credit, with the show? To their credit, he is back on their practice squad. So maybe he just needs, you know, maybe he might be on the Mitch plane. He might need six or seven. Someone seasons. other team picked him up. No, was that true? I thought somebody said he went back to Minnesota on their practice. I saw squad. some team picked maybe. him up. Maybe, maybe in the chat. I saw that. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. I'm feeling this beat. The That's cool not Kennedy even the beat. worst part about that. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, the Browns. He had a follow-up. Browns. Browns. Yeah, the Browns. Yeah, the yeah. Browns picked him up. Okay, there that's you go. what it was. Yeah. He had a follow-up tweet yesterday, I think, about that. And he's not was, even putting Ryan he Cox. He shit talking comment. about Justin Fields and about how Bears fans were all about Justin Fields because of the Mon shit. Like, you can go back and look at the Vikings Twitter on that. Like, he was all about shitting on us too. On his well, retweet dude, of of that tweet. Is it the dude with that podcast? Shane? Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, that well, then, and that's the fucking that's the fact of the matter. They would have. Listen, the Minnesota Vikings wanted Justin Fields. We know that. We all heard the story. They are hoping that he was going to fall. That They planned on him falling to, I believe, 14. And he did not. Ryan Pace made the move up, made the trade with New York, and they got they got Justin Fields. But We got yeah. Cherie. We did. Hi, Cherie. She, hey, Cherie. Yeah. Hey, Cherie. Hey, there Cherie. she is. You gotta get her a flag. I'll have to see. Let me send you down a TTNL flag, Sheree. I um, said I was gonna do it, and I yeah. totally need to do it. I'll I do actually it. got I'll... a bunch of bear stuff, but because I'm moving, I haven't put anything on. Oh, me. that's right. He's in the move, guys. Sheree's moving on up to the penthouse suite. Penthouse. <laughs> When's the big move, Sheree? Oh, uh, I haven't scheduled it yet, but I. Gotta be out of here by the twenty third. So, uh, so oh Will Mookie, Will Mookie Hills does he have a truck with a cap on it? He can start moving stuff for you. Uh, he gonna make that that long trip down here, I guess. Yeah, I heard he's got a buddy that has a limo service. Maybe you can bring him down, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> So those are my dumbest those. tweets, but we do have some good ones. Okay. Those were the dumbest tweets of the week. Now we always go to the good tweets after the dumb tweets. And Claudio, Claudio killed Claudio. Killed fucking totally. music. Thanks, Claude. <laughs> we, we had pride in you, but then you deleted the shit. What happened? Claudio liked the season. He forgets that the show First keeps going. Time. No, you don't always do good tweets. I, you got to communicate. Yeah, this. we do every. Oh no, you my don't. God. Sometimes we always don't. do good. Bad. <laughs> Claudio is dropping the ball. We could just go. Just do your do your riff. Oh my God! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Make it a little bit slower. His name is Claudio. He's completely lost. I don't give a fuck if he smokes weed. They all smoke yes. weed. Oh, uh, yeah, smoke. yeah, yeah. I need the number for that. Cherie Lawn Service, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> what, what the hell is, what the hell is going saying? on? Claudio is supposed to share the music right now. Now we're listening to Cherie's read music, but we're in negotiations. And we don't have our guy, Jim Larison, at the forefront. Claude, can yeah. you get that link up? Is it really that hard? 
It's good. We we're oh past my it. God. I'll just throw it up there. Boom! Look at this. Former friend. Oh, still a friend. Former. Still a friend. Yeah. Still former a friend, bear. JJ. Yeah. Former, former bear bears beat, beat guy. JJ Stankovitz. Colts GM Chris Ballard says losing linebacker Sterling Weatherford, who was claimed on waivers by the Chicago Bears today, was a hard one because the team really liked him. There you those go. Those are those are things that you like to hear. And we may have to do a DDP all 22 session with some college film of this kid. Yeah. Because he to is talk to my guy. Get some of he, his tape up there. Yeah, he led the uh the Colts and tackles, and he is explosive. I'll just say that. And he's if you I think he is going to be a kid that fits in Chicago perfectly with the way that the attitude that he plays with, because he is no fucks given. I'm going out there and I'm gonna destroy everybody. So I think that's gonna play out very well in Chicago. Yeah, I won't can we get is is there a pro day height a 6'4 224 pounds he played safety in college strong safety and you look at this football player and to Shane's point he does the Angelo I call it yeah. the Angelo <laughs> then let me do what I hired to do they, I got to do draft. what I got to do on defense. And There's that's... not a pre-draft, my bad. There's not a pre-draft, but he's at 6'4", 221 right now. That's, that's from the Colts. I mean, that from the Colts. is a bit – that's a tall kid. Now, he's listed as a linebacker. Are the Chicago Bears going to put him on the back end and have him play in the alley? That's a creative – I don't think so. – I, I think he fits right into – I think that's the size Flus wants his guys. I think he wants them. He I got wants a text the length. from a friend. He's starting yeah. to step. He's cutting back on my good side. We got some pro day numbers. 6'4", listed, Ivan. 224. Ran a 4'6", 40. 36 inch vertical jump. 9 foot 9 long jump. It was 6'9", 3 in the 3 cone. Yeah. He did 21 reps at 225. Those are pretty good numbers right there for a guy that's coming into the NFL as a rookie coming out of Miami, Ohio. Now, you got two freaks from Miami of Ohio now. Yeah. When I say freak, I'll say this lightly. I think he's the I got to do what I got to do type. And we'll call him Angelo's now, but obviously Angelo doesn't play like that. But... This guy's going to go out there and lay his body on the line for the team. And that's what right. you're getting in this football player. That's got to be something to watch. And J.J. wouldn't put that shit out there. And I know the competitiveness that Chris Ballard is. And you look at what the Colts, Chris Jack, Chris Jackal has the Colts going to the Super Bowl. Right? No? No, no, no. No? No. Never. Why would I do I such a thing or say I such thought a you thing. and McAfee were best friends. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, Weatherford's <laughs> Raz score was 8.96. There you go. And I'm at 6'4, 224, 36 inch vert. I know you went over all that, but um, yeah. Interesting Jackal prospect. is here, you Jackal fans. He is here. Hey. Um, but the weather for the, the Indianapolis Colts have a very talented roster. We'll oh, say yeah. that. And here's this kid coming into the Chicago Bears in a situation that obviously they thought they could probably sneak him back. Guys want to How many teams put people. a claim in for him? Do you have that number? You don't mm-hmm. know. No. Once you guys explain the Raz guy. score for uh, for Richard relative athletic question. score, relative. Athletic score. So he's taking a number. The well, rest score wanted... is made up of height, weight, forty times, and other athletic agility time. That's all. I, mean, I was just looking up the yeah, it's math the bomb. Right yeah, here. yeah. yeah I've, I've always wanted to get the guy onto the show. Yeah, Kent and I went back years ago. Phil, you probably remember our back and forth on Twitter. 
he was demanding that uh, there was no way in hell that Brian Urlacher was a first ballot Hall of Famer. And yeah, I that was. Yeah, he will be, but that yeah, that was. You even look at bomb. his RAS score on that. <laughs> <laughs> I might not well, like Urlacher's. Uh, yeah, well, other opinions, yeah. but I definitely will tell you he was. Let's go on to the best. Ballot. The there second best sweet before Great we start segment. talking politics. Here. Leatherwood. I wasn't going to yes. talk politics. No, I know. Duke <sighs> Mannyweather, the offensive line guru, put, and this is, you got to look at the date because this is critical here. It's from March 23rd, 2021. You and this can't is, flip his narrative, right? Yeah, this is pre draft. He said, Leatherwood is different. With the right coaching and development plan, he's going to be special. Highly intellectual and intelligent individual. Knowing how to coach and cue him will be the ticket because there is so much there with him. It's almost like he's describing Tevin Jenkins there. But go ahead. But um, no, I mean, I think it's critical to, to realize that this kid, there's going to be lumps. You know, there's going to be some the bad reps. But I think that I don't think they brought him here to sit on the bench. That's all I'm going to say. I think he's going to be out there and... Fluce has told you guys over and over and over again, if there's a young player that we feel fits our philosophy, he's going to play. And to me, that speaks that Leatherwood and them picking up the guaranteed money even more so doubles down on that. that he's going to he's gonna be out there and they're willing to let him work through the lumps, get some tape in a Chicago Bears system and let him let him work through it but man if you hit on him and if tevin gets out there and is the best right guard that tevin jenkins can be that's a fucking fierce right side of your line if you get those two you get those two guys cranked up and ready to go and then you throw lucas patrick in the in the middle and cody whitehair and that, that i mean that that's gonna make braxton jones situation a little bit easier too because there's gonna be some bumps in the road for him also but um, yeah, 23 years old, man. There's he just turned 23, I believe, in January. So there's a there's a ton there to work with. But like I said, not just to throw nothing but bouquets out here. He has been a little bit of an enigma, at, even at Alabama. That it's come on, come on. You have the talent. I need to see. I need to see more. You know, there's we, hope, guys. In there. Yeah, there's hope, but there's hope. it's only gonna it's only gonna go so far. Listen, when you got hope, that Duke Mayweather, it sounds like he's even describing Tevin Jenkins. That's what I was talking about. And that's those Raz scores that I forget I Curtis somebody just put that up. That was great. Will Fong. Is that Craig Will Fong, Jackal? Yeah, hey, right, Hank, right here. I got it right. Hank. Here. Sorry, Hank. I want to give you these RAS scores have been a pattern we saw in the draft. Now they're happening again. They have their they have their types, hundred yeah. percent. Donato, there's a pedigree there. Donato, he's over here showing me Leatherwood, Jonathan, and Weatherford. Leatherwood, Weatherford, Weatherwood, Weatherford. Try to do it. Jesus All the RAS Leatherwood. scores Leatherford. over nine point <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Poles and Eberflus love themselves some athletes. Now, is there confirmation, Jackal and Ivan and Sheree? Talk to me. To Kellen Deesh. Was he yeah. acquired like by the Chicago Bears or no? Is that he's on the practice squad? Yeah, he's on the so practice squad. There's another squad guy who has a 9.0 yep. RAS score. Extremely short arms. That's been his. Yeah. That's why he. Uh, I felt. might be able to talk to his offensive line coach and get him to come on next week to talk about that player. He was good at Texas A&M. So we'll get a. I'll make a call and see if we can get him on the air to talk about that kid because that kind of athlete at that six seven, I believe, Arizona like State. didn't he run like a four point nine one at air coming out of Arizona State? Arizona State. But he along did transfer. with he transferred to right. Arizona State. Just along with that, with some of the roster moves, some people don't give a shit about this, but I've always been a guy that has tracked it. Uh, 
Dante Pettis switched jersey numbers from number 86 to number 18. <laughs> I like this, Shane. Yep. I'm Tristan, a big fan of this stuff. Tristan Ebner went from 31. Rashawn Salam. Yeah. That's because they mutter. made the roster. Mutter. A mutter. <laughs> mutter. Motherfucker took my job. Yeah, mo- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tristan <laughs> Ebner went from number 31 to number 25. Okay. Jalen Jones. 30, 31 nice. to 25? Yeah. Yeah, Ebner's t- number 25 now. Jalen okay. Jones, uh, he went from number 35. He took Ebner's number, 31. Hmm. Mike Pennell made the big switch from number 63 to number 64. <laughs> Riley Reef went from 78 to 71. And is it, I always get his name. Is it Tongs or Tongs? I think it's Tongs. 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 I think it's Tongs. Tongs. Get the Tongs Tongs out and get the hot dogs out of the boiler, will you? Tongs went from 46 to number 81. Okay. Okay, The hot dogs are boiling. Get the Tongs out. Uh, 80 from 46 to 80 what? 81. 81. The rookies don't have to pay for that, but I think if you change your number and you're a veteran, you have to pay for the jerseys that were created, right? That are the NFL like, makes. That's yeah. why. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's was it Jalen Ramsey the... or I forget who it was that wouldn't change his number at one point and had to wait until the following year. It was the, the running back from Minnesota. Really it low. Was Alvin Cook. There you go. Alvin, Thank you. It was yeah. going to cost him a shit ton of money, and then they had to get the inventory down, and then he. Yeah. I believe he switched his number this year. Correct. Eddie Jackson was the same digit. thing, but he just yeah. didn't give a fuck. He went from 39 to to four. number four. No one's and, buying those fucking. Things. Yeah, I hate the number 39. I just yeah, I've <laughs> yeah, I Darryl refuse Strawberry. to put it on anybody when I was coaching. I'm like, I don't know why. I've just never liked that number. <laughs> I just he was the only successful player I've ever seen wear 39. Can you think of a good number 39? Um, That's what Steven Curtis Enos Jackson. came into the league with, remember? <laughs> fucking Steve. Curtis Enos. I was yeah. like, 30 fucking Steve. nine. Steven Jackson. Oh, Steven Jackson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I fucking hated that number on him, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big nut. I Google number 39 and Larry yeah, Zonka. Zonka. Steven, ja- Steven Jackson's name comes up, Ivan. So that's a pretty good call. He may be the uh, number 139. Yeah. But I I'm a numbers guy. There's Land some numbers. Of Lincoln. Land There's of Lincoln. Larry Zonka. Like, right, we talked about There's him. some numbers when players pick them. I'm like, oh, why did you go there? Yes. Never. Yeah, some of them I just don't. I'm just not don't a like. fan of 39. I remember Tim Worley wearing number 38. Oh, shit. For the Chicago oh, Bears. Well, Mule boy. wore 32, Alfred. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, Alfred. See? Let's get it to fucking... Claudio's giving you credit. Number. Maybe that's his patron number. Come on, Al. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, he Enos blew his from. knee out, and he came back at number 44, but he was like yes. 40 pounds lighter, and yes. he was like selling vacuum cleaners in the offseason. It was all... He was all yeah. <laughs> I could never see anybody rocking 39. I refuse to give it out. True story. Nobody wore 39. I don't know why. I just, I, I don't like it. I've never been a 58 fan either. And I'm not picking on Rokon. Really? I've like never 50. been a 58. Hmm. I can uh, still I see. Can. Can. Big can. fan of 44. Big fan of 44. Always I like 44. Yeah. 44, I, like I love. I don't like 8. Jack Don't Lambert like or 58. Oh, Claudio no, those are fighting ended. words, Claude. That's, that's, that's why I bought like eight. Eight, 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 eight. Eight's a number. Eight's the worst number. Eight's eight. the number. Eight. 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 I understand that. But on a Chicago Bear, eight has been Cade McNown. Eight has been Rex Grossman. I don't think anybody's really beating like number two for the Chicago Bulls. Number two is... Your boy? Didn't your boy wear number eight, too? Fucking the giraffe gaff. Didn't he wear that's number right, eight? That's right. Uh, he Michael Lennon. Lennon. Everybody picks oh on Mike God. Lennon, but he was just off by a minuscule a amount. Millisecond, so. Cherie. Yeah. So do you, Circle a back to Allen there. Deech, what do you guys think? Do you think that Where is he's that gonna... There he is. This Allen or another Allen? 
Well, and the AB too. I mean, you know, I don't know what AB thinks, but you Any think Alan uh, Deitch is going to do a little something over here? Is it uh, just a lottery ticket or are we actually going to... Uh... Are you jumping into your segment before we No, give it? I'm just kind of circling back to a little foot. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> We can not give a fuck all day long. I want to talk all day. Go ahead. I, I didn't know if this was part of your segment. I want no, to give you a jackal. No, I just think, you know, I, it's, we talked about Chase the Allen you're talking about. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's with some of the wide receivers that are out there right now or the trade availability in the wide receiver room that we have right now. Do you think that polls will go after... You know, it's like we talked about Darius Slayton before. Um, you know, we missed out on, I don't know if you guys are interested in Jalen Rieger. Um, or LaViscus Chenault. They're those guys you could have seen polls maybe trying to go at. You know, the picks weren't that high. Um, seventh round for Rieger. Chenault, I would have I would have been more. Rieger oh, yeah. is extremely explosive. But, I mean, who doesn't want a wide receiver that's extremely explosive and can't yeah. catch the football? I mean, that's fucking dope. That's a great setup. <laughs> Glad he went to Minnesota. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fabian Bones. Oh, yeah. Macy Brooks. Macy Brooks. You gotta have a random Bears show. Random yes. Bears name show. Oh wow. Yes. I love the random Bears name show. Have there been any cuts on other teams that you guys have kind of put you know put a marker next to thinking that the Bears should maybe target in the next couple of days? I thought that they were gonna look into Taylor Stallworth. Okay. The kid, he was in Kansas City, but he played for Flus the last two years in Indy. I thought that that yeah. might be a guy, but he's been in the league a little bit, so I think he if he'd be a guy. Don't like, don't forget that there's going to be guys that are going to be added to this roster after Week One because then their salary is not guaranteed for the for the entire year. It's just guaranteed game to game, week to week. But um, I mean, yeah, there's interesting cuts everywhere. I mean. We talked about Matt Waldman before. I mean, Matt Waldman was on our airwaves. Trey Sermon was a big name. Oh, going yeah. Going to I like South. Trey Sermon. Oh, yeah. I was high. He's a little, the he's a little stiff. He's close with yeah. with Justin Fields. But, um, yeah, I mean, he was a lot of people loved that kid. Uh, but Trey they, yeah. Sermon, yeah. What about Denzel yeah. Mims from the Jets? Not a fan. You don't like no. him? Nope. Really? Didn't he make the raw? He didn't get cut. Mm-hmm. No, they tried to trade him. They were trying to trade him. Yeah, I think they're just trying to get him. I'm just not. He's he's got traits, but he's, he's I just don't think he's good. He good what about Kendrick Bourne from New England? Yeah, that's why they're. Well, they were showcasing him because they wanted. To yeah, get that's a, why Mims seventh played. round draft yeah. pick for him. Exactly. And nobody would even nobody would even do that. But well, I I wasn't I a big fan. Game. I wasn't a fan of Mims in the draft. Uh, one no. of our former colleagues was pounding the table for him and round two and i just i never i never saw it yeah i wasn't a fan either of mims yeah, i think definitely a showcase you game take us you tr- you take a swing at that kind You're of good. talent but i i'm with shane i think that was a showcase to try I mean, to get if, him on a roster i mean like if, if you get him for nothing like like a six sure come, pick, come in great, and yeah. come in and compete but i'm not yeah. giving any confidence if he was cut no, no, would i be yeah. upset i'm not trading they anything brought him in? For him. No. Yeah, I wouldn't trade anything for him. What about yeah. Tyler Johnson from uh, Tampa? He got cut. Any interest in I think he got like... picked up already, didn't he? He got did picked he up. Signed? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a the Texan. Raiders? Or okay. Texas, yeah. Texas. Texas. Claimed, okay. Yeah. okay. Shane, did that kid get cut from the Bucks? Jalen? Darden, no, they kept him. They cut, they they cut Johnson. and Yeah, Jalen Darden. Yeah, I mean, that if they, was if, kid. That if they was wanna, kid. If they want to... Conditional sixth round or seventh round pick for Jalen Darden. Sign me the fuck up all day long. I'm that a big kid, fan of Darden too. That kid can catch the ball yeah, and he is not big, but he is explosive as hell. And Bears need more players like that. I'm looking for one there, one like that. I think Dante Pettis is going to have a resurgence. I just feel like there's a connection. A smooth, silky connection between him and Justin Fields. I think Fields appreciates someone who's patient in his route. Do you want me to kill the music? Yeah, it's fine. It's curls, curls, curls beat right there. You can hear it. Cool Kennedy (laughs) instrumental there. Listen, we are covering the Chicago Bears like nobody else does. And we're 
following you guys in the chat. Every week, Shane does that as we move towards the season. It's going to be more pronounced. As Claudio says, it's not the season. I don't do shit. No cut it out for me. I'm not doing that. Right, Claudio? Where is Next it? Next week. Next week, though, right, Claude? After the game? No. Are you, gonna t- are the, you the back? Game. What? There's no game next week, too. After the 11th. They play next week. They right? play the next Sunday, not yeah. this 11 Sunday. days. Hi, my name's Shane. Are you new here? <laughs> <laughs> I got it up. They play next week. Hey, cut it out. Claudio will be back with cut it out in 11 days. He will be back, right, Claudio? Prepared. I- I will I will come with whatever I have and you guys will have flip to it. Accept it. Flip it, Bratcher. That's it. You're gonna have to come with whatever, whatever I got. Sorry, Claudio. Oh my god. I just broke into that one. I broke. Speaking oh, of Claudio coming with whatever he has, they are coming with the fantasy hey. show. They'll actually kick it off next week every single Tuesday night. If you're not a patron, you are not in the fantasy league. If you wanted to be, it's too late. To the right, TTNL, baby. keeping it fantasy. Goes out the door. Claudio hired him to draw logos because he's <laughs> unemployed. <laughs> he's out here with 47 logos. Just relentless. <laughs> Tape never lies. You guys know, tape never lies. I fucking love it. I love it. Jackal loves it. You guys are going to love it. Every. Where's Alex H? We need a fundraiser to get uh, 70 bucks back to (laughs) Tuesday (laughs) night. He's he's getting a hold of all his Canadian friends to see if they're interested in (laughs) logos that are collecting dust that we paid for last week. Tuesday night. (laughs) How many divisions do you guys guys have? Seven divisions? 42. 44. 40 more divisions. Add three more divisions, and then whoever wins gets a fucking logo. (laughs) (laughs) Just give a logo to every person. Those logos are going to be on those t shirts, and they're going to sell out. You (laughs) get a logo. Ivan's going to buy one. Everyone gets a logo. Everybody's (laughs) getting a logo. (laughs) It's Claudio's logo show. Starting. Listen, Tuesday nights just got better here at TTNL. As you can see, the A team, our guys, the fantasy football gurus, will be covering your fantasy needs every Tuesday night at 10 East, right, Ivan? Correct. 10 East. 10 East. 10 East. Do we have some video? Draft tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, all four divisions going off at once. Okay, tomorrow night. Yeah. They yep, will nine be o'clock, big draft. Nine o'clock. Make sure you specify Beautiful. what Eastern hmm. nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, so that would be check your uh, check your dial, set it, remind yourself, whatever there is it already set on the app. It's going to shoot you a text, so get be fucking ready. Let's go. Got 60 seconds per pick. Don't suck. Don't so go what on time, pick. Let's what go. time do you start? Eastern. Nine for Eastern. the draft, draft tomorrow is draft, nine o'clock. Yeah. But the All show right. is 10 East. 9 yeah. Eastern. 9 East. All right. Listen. So just somebody let me know what time I need to schedule the show for before, you know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Fucking guys. Listen. Ivan's like, Claudio I'm good to go for the show. <laughs> what show? <laughs> no. Next Not week, the, the show dinner. will debut. Claudio actually sent me a private message on the show Shane he wanted to apologize so man I fucking I fucked up but for sure okay so man I fucking I fucked up but for sure okay for sure okay for sure okay how long did that take you, Phil? That was actually good. Listen, you find it little, little your apology. I actually was he was up to something. I'm walking with my you wife, listening Phil to the show. Enough that we're gonna find something. I'm listening to the show. That is my goal of the year. So I'm so cracking up. I'm like, what? She's like, did you hear Jackal say, okay, okay, 
Okay. <laughs> Listen to Jackal say okay. It's the best thing on radio. So man, I fucking I fucked up, but for sure. Okay. So man, I fucking I fucked up, but for sure. Okay. For sure. Okay. For sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. I did fuck up. I was talking about taking so understand instead of cup. Oh my god. And uh, yes, that will be Tuesday nights. Tomorrow night we get another fucker. edition of if you missed last week. I'm excited about this patron show as well as these guys' fantasy. Now, fantasy will be live here on our YouTube, but if you got to become a patron to watch Cars Keys, he's going to be breaking down the upcoming opponent all season long. They're going to be using tape and stuff. Real quick before you get into the promo, just so I don't screw this up. So we're scheduled to go 8.30 tomorrow night on Cars Keys, but you guys don't have a show until 10 p.m. East, right? Tomorrow night? No, no. They're not Tuesday doing night. We're not doing a show tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, you're not doing it tomorrow night. Okay. The draft right. is tomorrow night. The yeah. draft. Let's Let's the patrons can watch your show and do the draft at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Little, oh, uh, no, I had to. Okay. I, just, I wanted to make sure. Shane's yeah. checking. Were you broadcasting live the draft? No. Yeah. No, that's Cars right. keys to be on. Cars keys. Alex H is big 50 screen inch TV. I didn't know what was going on. Alex H would watch car keys and he'll draft. Hopefully you can. Here it is. Cars Keys. Lord Cars. You know what's work. Cars keys. This, it seems like everything is together. There's a single mindset on you know, what linemen come in and weigh it, what hits, what a loaf is. And everybody yeah. across the board is bought in as great as he was. And he was good athletically, but he was yeah. great mentally. And these two guys are just phenomenal athletes. Yep. Quick twitch. From everything we saw from Brisker, I know it was just a flat, but he saw things. He read things. They explode on the ball. And they're, they're going to give them chances here if they think they can play. And Flus has talked about this. And this is why when you see guys like Schofield brought in, Riley Reese brought in, Ibu Flu said, we are, not, we are going to be a franchise that is not afraid to play young players. Cars, keys. Although... I gotta say, I think that might be the best Cole Kennedy song right there. That beat, uh, one. That beat is fucking dope. I don't... I, I like just, that. I it's pump, a competition right now. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would, I would, wait, I would wait until other, th- other things come out before you say that, because you just... K, uh, CK just keeps putting out banger. Well, from what I've heard, from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, yeah, there's, the there's pop one in the hopper. Show, there's one the in the pop, hopper. The pop-up show, which we did today, me and Ivan teased it. Um, obviously, we're going through a little self-promotion. If you have a fast-forward button, which you, you all do. We'll timestamp it for you so you can, you can go fuck yourself. Whatever one's <laughs> easier. Hit fast-forward or Haters, you know, whatever. skip now. Haters. <laughs> or there's <laughs> this. Breaking news. The Saint Never Lies Network. Breaking news. That sounds like a hell of a post-game show that they do. <laughs> we haven't done that on BHL yet. <laughs> that was real. <laughs> what? I don't know why for some reason that didn't Shane, that, that, was not been, didn't see what that has oh not been God. that has not been edited by me Dude, at all. I saw it on Twitter and I was I'm I was taken back. I don't know. If you guys if you guys What's missed it, on? we can play it again. Play it again. Please, one more play time. Play it again. One more time. Right. Oh, that is just. Oh my God! <laughs> I see how they fucking spun it. Oh in the no! Poor you can hear Rex. the clicking back and forth. Oh. I don't know what's going on there, Shane. I was expecting that yeah. for the tweet of the week that we got out about the cinnamon rolls or whatever it was somebody put up on Twitter. That shit was hilarious. Who sold more albums, Bob Dylan, Tupac, oh. or Biggie? 
Bob Dylan. I would say Bob Dylan. Yeah. Been around a lot longer. Yeah. Tupac. Wow. Really? So really? 36.5 million ships. Biggie, he he had more than Bob Dylan, and Biggie was uh, not even close at 21.5 million. Hit him up. But he yeah. also has a much I bigger discography, Phil. So I just I thought that was a uh, fun fact of interest. A little fun fact. Been okay. waiting. Been waiting for Phil. Could you give me some fucking names? Every week we can understand the fucking why. Fucking names. Bears Hour Live will be back right after Bears 49er, the best (laughs) Bears post game show on the planet. Today, we looked at the um, pop up show. I don't know why these guys can't keep it together, but. Today we went live on our pop-up show. If you missed that, which we'll cut out Bratcher while he gathers himself. I'm done. I always, I'm when good. I coach running backs, I always want to know who's the surfer. Who's the surfer? Of the group. Who's the guy that is not afraid of the wave and rides through the wave and understand that somehow, you know, when the wave is in the curve, they, they're sliding through that shit and trust it. Well, running zone, you got to be that surfer. You got to ride that wave. You're, there's going to be bodies, arms, everything everywhere, right? When I'm coaching this up now with my kid, look at this. He's in the hole. Like Claudia. You, who doesn't fit? He doesn't fit. Stop, Phil, stop cutting Phil this off. This isn't OJ Simpson's black glove here. This is football, <laughs> baby. Let's watch this. <laughs> here he is with a fullback again. Mr. Nagy, he's got a fullback. Look at that cut right here. You kidding me? There you go. Breaking down tape live. Are you kidding me? We got to watch it from the coach's angle. We took you a deep dive into Demo and the narrative of he doesn't fit. If he doesn't fit, I don't know what. The hole is because the any scheme he fits. And as I said on the show, he's the skeleton key. And that's going to be his new nickname because he can open up any door to any offense. That's how talented that runner is. And if you missed that, go check it out. Rewatch this, Phil. You were on it earlier today. Sorry, I was late. Oh, okay. Had there was a- something else from that show that I noticed too. I love Khalil Herbert. Oh, terrible uh, job. I do oh. love Khalil Herbert. He wears yeah. a Bears jersey. Okay. And Alan Bratcher's timing of humor. It's epic fail again. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <It's> got it. <laughs> oh, my God. My I own. can't like that, man. Poor oh, Greg. Unbelievable. It's a great post game uh. show. Um, yes, post game shows. I'm glad I didn't send that clip to Bratcher, then he would have voiced it over, and that would have just been weird. <laughs> I gotta get my do it, Bratcher. Do it, I'm telling you, do you it should live. do it, do it live. Fuck it, I got it up. I thought no, it was I'm so gonna funny. Beat, I'm gonna beat you to death. <laughs> Come on, do it. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> take it out. <laughs> on you. Hey, Goofy. Hey, hey we stop gotta go. Spit. Goofy, stop spitting at me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. I thought it was so funny that I put hey, it up so bad. I had to send it to Shane anyway. I'm like, this is just too funny oh, not to put shit. up. Like, it was horrible. <laughs> horrible. Yes. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, we all agree. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I laughed so hard laugh. when I did it. Oh my god. You're so a- did we. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. So. The Chicago Bears, as we get ready for the season, we share some of the shows with you on Monday after the college football season kicks off. Chris Zorich and myself and Cherie will be live Monday nights. As long as the Bears aren't playing Monday night, we'll push to Tuesday before the fantasy football show, keeping it fantasy. And we will be doing the Super 16 poll show, breaking down the top 16 teams according to Chris Zorich in the country. You got to do. Then let me do what I hired to do. That's right. And we do that here. So a bunch of stuff that we'll be covering the Bears and football. It's football season. 
Got a lot. Twist invention here is called the. Not a porn today. Holy shit. Oh, Who the fuck is that fast? Me. Sorry. <laughs> That was fucking good. Do you have in those it. in your fucking cookies or something? And it's yeah. just like a keystroke? That it's was like a quick. quick draw. Put a cowboy yeah. hat on, bro. You with just hit stack. tab and you go tab and yeah! Yeah! Draw, bro. <laughs> Tab and gone. I have no idea what you guys are the even news, talking about. The, 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 the news, the chat, the the news, the the new oh, the bots. The bots. So, yeah. so we got to try to oh. quickly get rid of them. And Ivan was like, "Fucking." I see him and I cut him out. I see him. I got you now. That's it. Cut it out. Speaking of cut it out, it's not here, but I know this is here. Where is it? Where is it? I only imagine the smells coming on that thing, but you know, but you know, I only imagine the smells coming on that thing, but you know. Jackal better do some shit. Jackal better do some shit. Jackal don't do shit. Jackal don't do shit now. Jackal don't do shit. Jackal don't do shit. Jackal don't do shit. There he is. Hello, hello, hello. How are you, beautiful people? All 519 on YouTube or whoever else is out there. What, what are you guys doing? Keeping it fan? No, nope, this is keeping it 100. Let's talk fucking Bears football. Put your, put your arms back out. 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 Come on. Put your arms Hit the fuck. <laughs> I what almost is... fell for it. Uh, all right, let's go. Oh, we oh, oh, you. Jack you almost got me, Shane. Shit. You almost got me. <laughs> Boys, I mean, you guys fucking pretty much hit the 53-man roster. You've hit free agency or waiver wire pickups. Any predictions with? I mean, it's. I don't want to get right into week one. So, where do you see this roster? Fifty-three right now. How many guys do you think will be moved in that bottom half? You haven't. We've talked oh, about like six guys claimed. Let's give a number here. What do you think is going to happen? I think the the. So from forty-six to fifty-three, I think it's going to be. I wouldn't be surprised for the first few weeks if you're not seeing one to two of those guys ushered in or ushered out and then they'll see, Oh, we like this dude. We'll, we'll put him down on the practice squad. We're going to bring somebody else in. Cause the defensive line to me is, is I don't think they're done there yet. I really don't. Okay. Um, I don't know how, how Phil feels, but all these guys that they brought in are, are young. I think the oldest guy is what 26 and that's Watts and the, the tight end. But, uh, so you yeah, think about think 20% it's... of the roster could still get flipped over. I mean, if you do that, if you do about 10, 10 guys, that's, you know. It's almost oh, I think the bottom, yeah, I think the bottom, yeah. the bottom seven are going to be flipped quite often. They're, okay. that's, that's what they're going to, they're going to try to find guys that can play that not all these guys that they claim today are going to, are going to make it or going to be here all season. I, I just, I don't think that that's very likely at all, but. You know, a guy like Watts, I can see him here, the, the tight end. Obviously, Leatherwood is going to get an extremely long rope. But, um, Phil, do you agree that the bottom part of this roster is going to be in flux pretty much all season long? Yeah, I mean, I that's, the goal that's pretty normal the for the NFL, especially when you're a yeah. team that's not in Super Bowl contention. I think the goal is to be finding Israel Adonijes. That's – you. You take a guy, doesn't fit somewhere, you find them, they become a success story here. Those types of things is what the goal should be. That's why it's so important to put performance over politics. And you have to find these guys. Now, the kid Watts comes in here and plays 
to the level of expectation, all of a sudden he gets a new deal. And you're looking at the the roster in a way where you're trying to find the culture. Now, some of these guys they claimed, are they going to buy into what it is that most of these guys have bought into in this philosophy? Some guys that are, are gone didn't. So that's another thing, the culture. But I always say, like, as a coach, if I was coaching I'll in the get to NFL. That later. If I was coaching in the NFL, this guy has no understanding of this show sometimes. Does he, Cherie? No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Someone clip that. because. I... Hold on. Let me talk to this guy. To, to Jackal. Like you don't cut people off ever? Really? Does he understand? <laughs> <laughs> He's not the show <laughs> i'm trying to make a point i love you guys i love them should love aaron donald them. been suspended <laughs> well, i don't know what happened to bratcher i think he left he was upset with me now but am i wrong like i'm making a point i don't see ivan go we're happened? gonna get into this <laughs> wait where'd he go don't know he left he's, 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 uh, anyway he's done all right. The so, teaching of this, I think you're going to see the roster be so important to this football team to buy into that culture and find those identities that are, are part of this football team. And this distraction kind of threw me off my point. But well, I mean, it's not, I'll just say it's not cool. Some dude's talking shit about Bratcher in the fucking chat. We don't know who this person is. So I just was he talking. That's shit? what he was addressing see. in the chat with some guy just running his okay. game. You know, gums. I don't know if they know each other, but just saying, I think that's where that was coming from. Well, Bratcher. I don't even know if he's from what Watsika, Illinois. So I don't know. No, no, yes, but All right. So that. anyway, yeah, I did already. Don't even talk shit about Bratcher. Yeah. There you go. I don't. There you know. go. Thanks for starring. Distracted it. me. Yeah, but it did. It was. It, it caught off. Well, that, yeah. If that's if that's what it was. I I kind of see why he got up. That's it where he was personal. coming from. If he's trying to be personal, because the, the guy dude. kept saying, it. "Don't." The yeah. Kept Who's saying, saying it. what? Who's this saying dude, Ryan? What? Whatever. It was just uh, whatever. Of, we'll talk about yeah, it. We can deal oh with it later. God. Okay. But yeah, so the Bears and the fifty-three men. <laughs> nice. finding guys where they want to fucking find them. We're gonna move the bottom fucking what. 52 to or uh, 42 to 53, Phil, Ivan, Shuri, Claudio. I wish, I wish, I wish. So let me ask, is it like polls? You see him using the practice squad is like a, a large extension of our 53 man, making it like a, a 69 man roster where we're going to have probably a high number of transactions as well, because we're continuously bringing in guys. We're trying to find some pieces, some low risk, high reward type type things is that what you see doing with this team this year i see like like these guys like shane was saying there's gonna be a lot of turnover at the bottom but like for instance if whoever starts week one let's go let's talk about borum and, and leatherwood if borum gets a start and they're gonna ease leatherwood in it's still week to week with anybody out there it's like can are you performing are you performing in in are you performing this week? Are you consistent with what you're doing? They're going to be looking at every single body on that field to see if they're doing the job that they want or else they're going to go find somebody else. You know, they're, they're more than willing to find the, to find somebody that fits their system and wants to be there and wants to do the work for them. They, they're not going to put up with their BS. So, like, I, I just feel like everybody's kind of on notice. Like, there's guys that, are, that have their spots. There's guys that are going to be on this team regardless. But I think everybody else that has a question mark or you think might have a question mark, yeah, they better be ready to to, to play 100% all the time or you're going to be you know found on the street somewhere. Okay. I, I'm interested in seeing what is going on, but I'd be remiss if I didn't address whatever transpired. <laughs> it's like the – I don't know if, Shane, you caught this. I didn't. No. Okay. So somebody, I'm in the middle of a point, just keeping it 100 now mm -hmm. that on this thing. And Bratcher interrupts me in the middle to address someone in the chat, which I have no idea what is being said in the chat because I don't even have the chat open. Just making my point. 
And I'm like, what the hell just happened? Like, and why Phil are you cutting me off? Busted his stones. So I'm busting Bratcher's chops. Bratcher returns with, you don't cut anybody off on the show. So now it's attacking me. I'm just making a point. So I have no idea that somebody in the chat is taking a personal shot yeah, at this guy, at Bratcher, which is completely mm -hmm. wrong. But Oh, so... Yeah, yeah, I missed all that. The yeah. timing was just off. Shane, the timing and it was led so to he just couldn't help, he obviously couldn't help himself because he read it and he just got pissed. Dude, and it kept he, he should get pissed. That's just it uncalled yeah. for. It's but Bratcher has it. now it's, left the show. Yeah, he, he just literally just bounced from the show. Left. So but we'll deal with that later, you know. But we're just, Shane, we were talking. Everybody about wants that. to know, Jackal, because I just want to make sure. Everywhere, I want to know. You don't want to know. I don't think it's fair. Huh? I knew what happened. I could see it. Well, I feel bad for Bratcher. Me too. Because I didn't know. I didn't that know that guy was attacking him. That's why I said what I said, so you guys were aware. Yeah. So just I know. Yeah. Phil, yeah, just I'm, bounce off and call him. I'm talking to him right now. Yeah. I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm, totally, explaining, I'm explaining to him what the situation. I is. totally am apologizing on the air to Bratcher, because I didn't know someone was attacking him. But it's yeah, I fucking leave it. All the, all the shit happens. Usually, I'm the one who gets blamed for I that. I thought you did it, Shane. There's a lot of fire tonight. Oh, God. Was that a thing? People thought that it was, was me what? in the chat doing it? Yeah, there's a bigger asshole in the chat than you, Shane. That's cool. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. So oh. I apologize for Bratcher from me. I'm not doing it over the phone in the middle of the show. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was going on, but I would have, if I knew, I would have addressed that asshole too for doing that to Bratcher. Yeah. So we joke with Bratcher. But I didn't know. So the audience now should understand what's oh, going on. Oh, so that's why he bounced because he got pissed off at you. Yes. For Yeah. He, I, I didn't know that someone was attacking him. But that's like you making a point. And then me just, and you're in the middle of it. It's not even me. It would be like Claudio putting it up and be like, shut the fuck up. I'll t address that late in the middle of you making a I was like, what is going on? So, yeah. I mean, well, the. And I know that people in the chat won't want to see this, but I mean, we're getting attacked <laughs> all the fucking time. Yeah. And exactly. then, I mean, some dude wanted to fucking throw down with me tonight. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm pretty fucking scared, as you can see. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus. Well, but, I feel bad for Alan because I didn't mean for Alan to be upset with me. Yeah. Maybe this will bring him back. I'm kidding. <laughs> Get rid of that. It drives me nuts. Anyway, yeah. Jackal, you have one more yeah. thing. So I, I do. I, we didn't bring. I, I might have missed it. I don't think I did. But have we talked about Lucas Patrick coming back and what the plan is for him? Ease? Is it going to be like an easing into the situation, or I don't think so. I think he's just going to be ready to hit the floor and ground. You know, ready to rip ground. Been, hit the ground been around. He's played a lot of football. You know what I mean? He's been around. I think. I think they put him in there. Okay. I don't think that they're going to – I mean, it, it was, what, his thumb? Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're I don't think they're – I don't think said, they're easing him back in. Do you, Phil? Who? He's Lucas Patrick. Lucas Patrick. I think they're going to – he's going to start opening day. Seriously. Do you have him on limit, like like a snap count, or do you think no. he plays – No. you think he's he plays playing. the whole game? He's going to be out there unless okay. he's hurt. Like, if he – if they don't think he could play the whole game, he ain't dressing. If he's dressed, he's out there to play the whole game, not some snap count. Yeah, I read somewhere they were trying to get him back game one. Like I see someone put in the chat, but they were they were going to give him a certain number of like uh, like seventy percent or whatever. They weren't going to let him play the whole game. They wanted to not necessarily ease him back, but just lighten the load just a little bit to, for game one anyway. But I don't know if that's just talk for. You know, you don't want to let the other team know what your plans are type shit, or if that's just, you know, he's being honest. Who knows? You know the NFL and injuries. Listen, if Lucas Patrick should be your starting center, that's only going to help the Chicago Bears, in all honesty. And we'll see what they do with this team. And, again, that whole interior, white hair, is it going to be Mustafer? I hope it's 
Patrick, Sam, I think, played pretty good against Cleveland. There's still things. Again, Shane and I talked about it. It's almost like the opposite. When they talked about getting in shape, coming out there, being the person that you want, that's the opposite of what Sam has done. But the tape is going to tell us the true story. I think they signed, they almost like Larry Ogan Joby, they focused on Lucas Patrick. They called him a prick. And they wanted him at the center, and they want this kind of. It wasn't even their first choice, though. Brian Who was Allen. Their first? Brian Allen. That's right. That is right. He went back to the Rams. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. They. He wanted to be a Bear. He's from here. They just didn't want to go financially. What where he wanted. Well, we'll see what transpires with that situation inside. Moving and young. I have a last question. And I don't okay. know if you guys know much about this guy, but it's it's funny that he brings this up. But um, where is he? Actually, I want to pop. I want to give him credit because shit. Did you guys just delete it? Or did he delete it? I don't oh, know. Really Amir Smith. Um Marcetti. He was drafted by the Vikings last year. Um young. Well, up and coming wide receiver, just somebody I think that would we could put in on the practice squad and take a look at. I think he fits that kind of mold that we just talked about with trying to find a piece, low value or low, you know, he high had reward, a, low risk type shit. He had some comments to uh, who was the corner that they Minnesota drafted a corner. Oh, um, um, not McKinney. Uh, what the fuck's his name? Well, anyways, he had some words with him telling him he better sleep with one eye open and <laughs> shit like that. Oh, and they geez. Oh, okay. Fucking bounced him. Not much of a team guy, is what you're saying? Yeah, so, but I mean, stupid shit gets yeah, he said in the heat of the moment. Surprises. The cornerback <laughs> this year? The quarterback they drafted this year? Or? Yeah. Yeah, they were talking about it today. Andrew, Andrew Booth. Yes, that's who it was. Yep. Okay. The kid from Clemson. Yeah. Oh, that kid. Yeah. It, which, kid Booth. Yeah, yeah. You know how it is. It's That's a huge that's competition of, yeah. in, in camp. And if you can't take that shit personally, you can't, it's just – and I'm not referring to what just happened here, but that's – it's just like here. You can't, you can't take anything. Yeah, we bust Bratcher's balls, Claudio's – experienced it jackals experienced it everybody everybody has you can't it's all about if we're not talking about you then that's when you should be worried that's you know that's i've how many people have i fucking told that here there ain't nothing fucking personal here there's nothing personal on the football field but when you make it personal that's when you make moves and that's when you let, let yeah. people go you're threatening somebody like that. It's just another draft pick by the Vikings, too, that's gone. I think they only have four picks left out there. They, they gave up in. more for Jalen Rager than yeah. Cleveland gave up for Amari Cooper. <laughs> I just don't get I don't know how the fuck oh. Howie Rose. And they laughed at the Eagles for drafting Rager when they got Justin Jefferson, and now they traded yeah. for him. Yeah, I just – I don't know Howie Give Roseman. Regime, but. How the fuck – he got – Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is – yeah. An asshole, but he's a you know he's a good fucking player, and they they just fucking gave him away. Yeah, mm -hmm. fifth round pick. It's crazy. Twenty twenty three, and they got that they got that all all that back plus for record today. I just yep. that's as much Seven, as I four. despise Philly. I got to give Howie credit because he's constantly fucking going. That's why I brought up the Cunningham man. Thing. They yeah, always they, are moving that around. Him. We got a guy in our corner from that. That front office, right? Well, I wish Ryan Poles would do that more. I'd be, I'd be all over doing stuff like that. You gotta, you gotta keep shit going. I mean, Reger was a first rounder a couple of years ago, and didn't work out. You move off of him, and boom, there you go. But you gotta, if you're not fucking always making moves in the NFL when you're a building team, you're gonna be, you're essentially going backwards. So that's props yeah. to Rosie for that because he. Or to Roseman for that, they they've built up that fucking team. Yeah. And they got a lot now, of good fucking talent. 
now it goes down to their quarterback, how he's going to play. But that team is being built aggressively. That's the term you're looking at. And Gardner Johnson is somebody who gets in people's Drink. heads. Is there a fucking player that fits Philadelphia more than that dude? <laughs> oh, he's going to be a I'm serious. city of brotherly love. He fits favorite. right in. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be man. a fan favorite over there. Yeah, um, Put him with Darius Slay and let's go to work. Yeah. They got I gotta pay him. Man. I know my power aid is gone, man. I was looking for some more in there. Have you ever done that? Like, damn, there's no more in there. That's what I, I did. I like, my, that's, just, that's a funny comment. I like that. My daughter <laughs> woke up and Ela brought Ela brought her down because she wanted to give me a kiss and gave her a kiss and I grabbed the beard, and came back, and all fucking hell broke loose. I guess while I was gone. Yeah, I feel all right, we'll get incredibly. I feel incredibly bad for that. I really do. Well, you know, but, it happens. You were in a you were in a moment, you were passionate. You took some of that passion out on Bratcher just the way it came out, and he was feeling a type of way because he was getting his balls busted. And no, here there's we are. no I will go to my grave. <laughs> that's pretty good, Jack. That's that's really not. It's like I From only maybe his perspective, ever, maybe. Yes, but I would never expect anybody to like jump in when Shane was talking except me about a point or i would never expect anybody to jump in when i was talking except shank maybe cars so i just reacted to that like what the hell is going on i had no idea i know i'm not the asshole Shout out. So i'm, I'm <laughs> usually the one that's down. fucking Shout fighting out. that fight. you did, you did. i would you I'm asking. You were with somebody's mom already on the show. So uh, yeah. I think once a show, it's, it's a given. <laughs> I would ask Bratcher to come back to address that. Just a couple, little guy. You just a couple. Yes. Just come back on. Dress hit him up, that. man. That's I just yeah, bounce off. Fucking hit him up. Seriously. Well, we're gonna go to shout out. Right? Shout outs. Well, we can do there it. We go. There we, we go. Yeah, we got you. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 crew. Gotta show love to Shout out. Now it's time to shout out worldwide friends and fam life. The network that keeps it real, 100 crew. So many in the world that I gotta show love to. But some this policy the show is at its end. But for me it's so important to thank the charter members and the fans. Built the network, speak the truth through the tape. Never run around the truth, no narratives we create. Set them straight, no bubble screen up for the day. Call your chain getting nervous, cause keeping them up too late. That's it. No more to say to get the shot of vital But hurry up, cause the postman's getting homicidal Shout out, I know you hear me, baby Shout out, I know you see me, baby Shout out, we gotta holler at you Keep it 100 crew, gotta show love to Shout out, I know you hear me, baby Shout out, I know you see me, baby Shout out, we gotta holler at you Keep it 100 crew Gotta show love to the network that keeps it real. Sense is strong. Hey, 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 we're back. Yeah. I yeah. did. Hey, let me let me address something. So I see we got a. Yes. Got a dude in the fucking chat here. So, Black Irish. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I was going to yeah, put just, it up, but this dude's just... No, it's all good. You just... You can go fuck yourself and just enjoy being blocked. So, see ya. Yeah. How about that? Ridiculous. Yeah, that's... Whatever. It's 
complete fucking nonsense just so everybody knows i would never in a million fucking years make comments like that on an alternate fucking account i mean i literally went and kissed my daughter because she couldn't sleep she doesn't sleep so that's a bunch of bullshit but anyways yeah listen the fuck did i miss yeah <laughs> fiery just, show. They're accusing Shane of being the one making a comment. About Saying that him. I was making all the fucking com- I went back and read oh the comments. And he I just would, happened uh, to not be on the show at the time. Yeah. Right. I would fucking uh, never. Uh, Hopefully, Bratcher doesn't fucking think that. I wouldn't. I don't oh, think my so. God. Listen, that I'll address different. this as classy as I can. When I'm focused in a show and I could come off however you want it to be but i know what i am on this show and i'm in a thought and someone jumps on i don't if it was fucking claudio whatever i react like what the fuck was that and then he reacted but i didn't know that's the thing i'm trying to let everybody know i didn't know there was a personal shot being taken so So, I would have just, if I was Bratcher, I would have waited, let me finish my point or whatever, and then say, Phil, do you mind? I, I got, I'm going to address it. And then I would have known. I didn't know. I thought he was just being rude to me. So, yeah, but I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I, I think it was more how you also said it to him. Like, at the, and with the way shit's been going, I think it just kind of just, culminated and here we are honestly yeah, like, i don't i don't i think he blame him talk being, to him and get it over you know and yeah. talk about it you'll be fine i don't blame him for being pissed off about the fucking comments yeah that, that guy's a there. fucking if it's, if it's the, for that if, Fuck yeah. him. if it's the and i'm not i'm pretty positive it's probably coming from people that he's been connected to yeah previously but that's yeah that's bullshit the comments Jay, that i read I, in there i'm being honest I wouldn't expect anybody to cut me off in a thought, except Shane. Uh, Jay's, been run, Jay's been running his mouth in there too. It's oh, whatever. Man. It's I wouldn't even. It's fine. I'm Have just fun. being honest. Have fun, Jay. Yeah. See ya. Bye, Jay. <laughs> Shout out. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you can. But please, anybody here. I did I'll call go him. I did text him. <laughs> Go ahead, Jackal. All right. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I actually, you know what? Who wants to go first? I don't want to be. Uh, ladies first, Sheree. Sheree, go Sheree. ahead. Oh wow, yeah, you need to have some me. manners on this show today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as I always say, shout out to you all, including Bratcher, um, for making my Wednesday nights fun. I enjoy coming on here and spending time with y'all. I know I've been walked with work and trying to be caught up in all that mess but i do appreciate this break from the normal life and bullshitting and joking around and having fun with you guys talking to us so thank you all for that um honestly that's all i got is y'all this week i don't have nobody special <laughs> just shout out to y'all oh wait no. shout out to ivan Claude and Jackal, good show last night. I didn't. Get, I got to go back and watch it again. Um, but good show. I like Thank the. You. I like the dynamic of you three having your different opinions. So uh, like it's gonna be a fun season. What's that? Yeah. And, Thank you, Sheree. Uh, Thank you. Shout out to Cars. I'm shouting out all our new shows that came out this week, this past week. Cars and Shane did a good job on that show. So. Fun shows. I'm excited that we got something. I was telling my coworker we got a, a show every day of the week now. So I'm excited that it's a full week of TPNL. <laughs> well, I love it. thank you thank so you much. Too. I know Jackal loves it. He I fucking do. loves it. I fucking love it. Anybody praising Jackal, he loves. So <laughs> I don't blame you, Jackal. I love TTNL. There you go. You have there a shout is. out, Jackal. I want to shout out Ivan and the fam. Thinking of you guys, you know. Um, nice. Vargas Love. Um, the three of us had the fun last night talking. It was just nice to probably, you know, talk some fantasy football and uh, and have some have some fun. So I uh, just wanted to say a shout out you guys as well for bringing that out into my existence last night because it was fun, much needed. Um, shout out all you guys. We've had a long week. We're getting to fucking real meaningful football. 
it's going to be a lot of fucking fun. Um, you know, and, and I just, at the end of the day, wish you guys all health and prosperity. AB, we're thinking of you over there. I, uh, <laughs> what a fucking night. And, um, hey, in, in reality, this is the type of shit. If you don't, you don't know what somebody's got going on, you know, it's, it, this is, a, you just reach out, say hello. And, uh, this is one of those moments. So, um, maybe do that if you guys are thinking about somebody. So take care, everybody. Jackal's nice. pen flip game is on point. I had <laughs> the David Letterman. I was going to put pressure on Jackal last night. And he night drops it. <laughs> and get a hold of him before the show. Because I didn't get to see the very beginning of your show. So who introed it? Was it I? I did it. No, I did it. No, I did, it. did, it. No, I did a yo, a version of the yo, and just introduced keeping him. All right. Because I was going to put pressure on Jackal if it was him. Because he's got a tendency to smush his hands together. He says, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's gonna be a good show tonight. And then he grabs him and does the does one of these. Oh yeah. So we're gonna set the over under at three point five. Grab. We might have to take turns. Maybe we'll Check. have to take turns doing opens. That's what yeah. Make them do it the next. Yeah. Make, make them, them do turns. it the next time. We'll just okay. be sure and rip the uh, <laughs> beginning of the so show. But come up gonna, with the best. That's gonna put pressure on him. Hello, I boys and girls. Well, thanks and for not doing boys that. and girls. <laughs> yeah. Claudio, do you have a shout yes. out? Yes, I do. I have a, a few. I'm going to echo, obviously, uh, Chris, uh, Ivan, you, uh, Chris. It was awesome. It was fun. We're going to have a lot of fun this season. So, uh, you know, shout out to you guys. Shout out to, you know, Shane, Phil, giving us that opportunity to have our uh, show, our little show. We'll see what happens. Uh, Cherie, of course, shout out I'm to you. I'm higher up on the Rat. fucking pedestal tonight, fucker. <laughs> 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 exactly, Bratcher, bro. Hopefully you're listening. We love you. Fuck that dude. Fuck those dudes that know you. They came and talked shit. Fuck, fuck them, bro. Jack fuck the haters. Them. They're hating. All right, Bratcher. Um, if if anybody gets their balls broken more than me, oh my god. Come on. Over the there's, yeah, there's no been nobody that's had their balls busted more than Phil over the years. Nobody. Sure. And you're wrong about Tupac, and I don't care how many fucking records he sold. Eleven <laughs> platinum albums. <laughs> All right, just listen, Cole you know. Kennedy. Got to shout out yes. Cole Kennedy. Yes. You guys will oh hear the song. God. We did a little bit for the patrons, but uh, there'll There's be a lot the of cool Kennedys throwing songs out there. Oh, Claude. Yeah. Cool Kennedys. Cool Kennedys. Like logos. Cool Kennedys sampling one as we speak. Yeah. I had to send him a movie that it. <laughs> little clip that we debuted tonight. There's going to be a new, uh, or, uh, new song coming brags. out of that. Listen, Sam, I'm not say any names. Sorry to cut you off, Shane. Uh, hey, you mother. Shane. <laughs> Sam, I didn't forget. Get him out. Get him out. I didn't forget, <laughs> Sam. I owe you 50 bucks from last season. Me and Jackal. Oh, remember? Shit. <laughs> he's out. Fuck it, he's out. But yeah, Sam, listen, me and Jackal do owe you 50 bucks. We made a yep, side bet. We got you. We will be man of oh our word. Oh, my so. God. Sometime, um, I just, <gasps> this show. All right, let me get, hold on. Let Go me ahead. just finish this and we can wrap this up. A you few guys, guys in the chat. Everybody, first of all, way too far. like 700. <laughs> We had set over 700 people in the chat tonight. That's incredible. Season hasn't Minus even one. started. Minus <laughs> It hasn't even started yet. You are Minus nice. everybody. So it hasn't even started yet. So, I mean, shout out to everybody, obviously, that came on. Um, free Justin, you've been fucking killing it all night. Your comments are hilarious. Adeptus yeah. Serpentis, I haven't shouted Adeptus. you out in a while. He has always got some knowledge and dropping some knowledge. Ron Rizzle. We might have to get a Ron Rizzle, Cool Kennedy, Phil Toshin collab song. Yeah, would, we got to put Ronnie on a track. I'm yeah, going to work that on that this year. And let I'm also going to get my gun. Who? <laughs> let Bragg sing the hook. Bragg Unless sing. that dragon was fucking a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Bragg's singing a hook. One last shout out for me. Uh, so, yes, my this, little daughter. Up? Is a freshman, Alicia. She's 14. Little she's, little no, don't. Oh, she's not, <laughs> motherfucker. Listen, don't even. I know. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna bring up my daughter, and they're gonna fucking. She's 14. I think we're all gonna, gonna click go off the show in a second. What the fuck, model? All right, listen. listen. She, she a college, Claude? 
No. She's a freshman <laughs> in high school. She oh, never. Geez. She was a lacrosse player. Played other sports. She never played field hockey. She goes out for tryouts and she makes varsity as a freshman. Yeah, yeah. that's what's makes up. Makes varsity as a freshman. Twenty-four. I got Even though she has, she goes to Sheehan, Phil. It's, 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 I know. It's, she's a traitor. I'm but. still gonna cheer for her. Yes, of course. Awesome. So that's that's Hopefully my baby like girl there, Alicia, making varsity. So very proud of Look her. Look at so that. I, told her I would shout her out. Congratulations, awesome. congratulations. Thank you. Freshman start in varsity. Field. Well, not starting. Not, not, did I say start? Oh. I meant made varsity, not start. Yeah. Well, she still, that's an oh, that changes it. Fuck yeah, that. It changes. <laughs> move on. We'll see. Fucking, <laughs> fucking get Claudio. <laughs> you raised the bench warmer. Good job, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. That's all for me. That's it. Get the 39 jersey. There you go. She's wearing 24, thank God. Yes. She's Sandlin taking shots at you, Claudia. Thank that's, God they look great. like they're mine. You're right. You're right. It's, oh, a, it's got a, a mirror for radio. My daughters are Listen, beautiful. the handlebar himself, a.k.a. hashtag porn stash. Our guy, Ivan Vargas. You got some shout outs. Yeah, I'll just shout out the entire TTNL crew. Uh, you guys have been there for me with my son's surgery, and it means so much. Just the love that you guys have been sending me and my wife. Uh, you know, you guys just keeping up, keeping tabs, keeping check, being there, being involved. And that means a whole lot to me and my family, and I just want to shout you guys out for that. And again, and I'll shout out Alan too. Just Alan, we love you, Alan. Just, yeah. We, it was. It is what it is. I want Alan to come back. I think he does a great job. I think he. We give him shit, Baby, but but he 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 does do a great job, and I think he is a, a a big part of what we do here at TTNL. So I want to shout out Alan as well. Yeah, thanks. Thank absolutely, Shane Marsaw. Yeah, I'll bounce off what Farkas said. I kind of upset i missed the whole thing going down maybe i could have deflected and i don't know figured it out but like i said i know i know i'll keep it 100 here i know bratcher hates getting his balls busted and like i said i've told him 100 times just part of the fucking part of the thing part of the deal here the guy starting out is the gonna get his balls busted and there's never ever ever anything personal about it i mean you could see on claude's face last week the discomfort after a while i mean at one point he's like man you're fucking Enough. relentless Enough. like relentless. Fuck, yeah like <laughs> shut the fuck up that's that's what we but i'm used to I've been, I've been with you guys from the start i mean i understand exactly you know, balls, exactly it's, it's there's awesome. nothing hey, we had there's nothing points. in it i'm yeah. i fully support Alan for being pissed. I I see shit in the chat and I've stepped over top of people, you know, when they're talking to address it. So totally, totally understand it. And the comments were way the fuck off yeah. line and a bunch I of bullshit. Know, so I support Alan Bratcher 150% for being upset. And I I wish I would have been here when it when it unfolded. Maybe we could have, like I said, figured it out, but hopefully. Alan understands and oh, there oh, we go. There oh, this will lead yes. to a better discussion, guys. There it is. Oh. There, there, is. He, there he is. There hey. he is. There he was. There Who's he is. that? No. Don't say he was. He is. He is. Bratcher, I want to be the first one to apologize to you because I had no clue that someone was taking a sh personal shot at somebody that wasn't even talking or making a fucking point what it's that not about person that did, Phil, what Phil. that person did was a disgrace i agree to, um to bring up any person oh, i just want to say this to you okay because i'm blind to it i'm doing a show i gotta the show goes on there's so much minutia of this to have fun and break calls <laughs> But I did not know that you were addressing somebody in the chat room within the show that was t talking some bullshit about you. So I 100% understand now. So I'm saying I'm sorry. Exactly. I apologize to you. 
and I I'm I apologize I left the way I did, but when I'm going to be on here and I'm going to talk and I'm going to get cut off 15 times a show and then the one time I come back on something I get ridiculed, I'm going to get upset. I'm sorry, I'm human. It happens. I had a bad emotion, but I'm going to say this one time. Fuck you, Ryan Allensworth, period. End of story. Spell my fucking name right first before you talk, motherfucker. Get the fuck out of my life, period. Peace. That's it. It's done. Yeah, He's gone. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, He's done. Okay. Well, there you I'm go. I'm sorry. I'm just not a fucking doormat for anybody. I'm not going to be a fucking doormat for anybody. It's all cool to poke fun. It's all cool to talk shit. I get it. It's cool. But constantly like that, I had a moment. I did. And yeah. you can call me, say I cry. You can say whatever you want about it. It's fine. It's whatever. Vulnerability. You talk about it all the time. Being vulnerable right now with it. Okay? Absolutely. I'm saying that right now, I'm not a fucking doormat for anybody. Period. That's it. Yeah. yeah. There you Thank go. Thank you, Ryan, whatever your name and is. And I love all you guys, too. I do. Absolutely love you guys. I love being here. I love everything about this network, and I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. Just had a shitty moment, guys. It happens. Probably, probably too many of these because I'm an alcoholic, right? You've even you've created two Shanes on a show. Shane's Look doubling at you. right now. He's gonna you me with two are fucking Shanes. Shane. Shane. How did you do this? Right? Our Shane. fucking our <laughs> he's a <laughs> fucking magician. What he have is. A I want to try this. Shit. I want to oh. try it. The magic oh, of Bratcher. Poor Bart. Bar. Bar. He's going to be sore. <laughs> Holy shit. Poor Bart. He's going to be sore. Get oh, fucking fucking how many holes now? now. Shit. It's two holes hey, now. Can we get out of this? Obviously, ahead, we get it's haters. All good, we all get haters on here. And, I'm not and, mad about that's, that. That's another, no, but that's another Don't level. Don't fucking call out my hometown and call and talk shit about me like this. My hometown? Really? You don't even know me, bro. You don't even know me. Don't act well, like you know me and talk shit like that. I don't know I'm if sorry. you got to hear it, Alan. I, I, and I want to make this abundantly clear. I, I left to go kiss my daughter goodnight, who was I having know. a problem sleeping, and I didn't want you to think because somebody in the chat put in there that I, I bounced and made a fake account and did all that shit, which I, I would, I know, hundred percent never do. It's but, all good, Shane. No, no, yeah. man. I'm not no, mad no. at you guys. I just had a shit moment, and I just felt like I was kind of being shit on from around the around the whole fucking way. And you can call it crying or whatever. That's fine. It's all great. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to get shit on like that personally and just sit here and fucking be okay with it ever. Yeah. Ever. No, I don't blame you. You that. have every Especially right. calling out my hometown like well, that. Exactly. I think, really? Bradshaw, I think what Phil's like, saying Who are you, he, bro? Come, feels... come find me then. Come yeah. find me. Oh, that's what they want, man. I wouldn't even. Yeah, I wouldn't man. go down that. No, I think it's. I think it's somebody that. I think it's somebody that knows. Yeah. Where you are, Fucking Alan. Troll. Yeah, that's I think exactly it's somebody it that is. knows that you're with us, and probably somebody that we've taken a shot at mm -hmm. in the past. I think you probably know who I'm talking about I at do. this point. Yeah. yeah. So it it's all good. Say, Claudia. It's not hard to no, no, change. Was, a, it's not hard to change a picture, but I think we can actually find out through the. uh the app of who's posting that shit anyway. That, guys. But whatever. You don't have to do that. That's Claudio, fine. what did you want to say, Claudio? No, I just wanted to say is I think in that moment, if he knew, if Phil knew I know that, that dude was attacking, he would have let you go at him. But, I know. You know, he didn't read the comments. So that's, I think I that's know. the whole confusion there. So I, I know. I and to, I totally understand that. From Phil, my perspective and I'm, I'm sorry side, if I know. came off wrong. I just got it. Just all came I, up in me too fast. I got heated for the man, record, and I thought no one had my back me. for that moment. Period. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. you're all good. Go. People are gonna DM Dude, me about Jesus Alan. Christ, Phil. <laughs> just talking <laughs> about it. Just... But Bratcher, real yeah. quick, how do you feel about Claudio's daughter's not even starting? Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. He Come asked off. me to put that overlay up for him, and I was like, "You really want to go down that road? You're gonna get yeah, stuck up course. like a fucking The first thing, the second I say, my daughter, she's underage. <laughs> like seriously. Come on, man. She called the we cops. Asked, uh, we asked friend. if she was a freshman in college or high school before we. Went with the joke. <laughs> Listen, I want I want people to understand this. We can Shane and I will still not agree about Ron the whole it. Tevin thing. The I'm not mad at Shane. When I get off the show, as Shane was joking earlier in the show, we're this isn't for fucking clicks. It's the passion of the show. And Claudio is a hundred percent right, Alan. Yeah. And I have so much more respect for you for coming on the air. 
and not only making great television because that's what's happening right now, in my opinion, but also doing the fucking right thing. Like there was confusion there. Don't be the guy that signed off. And there's no, there's no better way. I have to deal with 55 DMS about somebody being a pussy tomorrow. And you destroyed all those fucking DMS right now. No, exactly. Oh, oh, oh. And I don't want to hear it. Yeah. It is this what it is, is man. We can't talk about it. We be about it. Yeah. When I say TTNL's family, we have other networks that are haters. That are haters. I break Jackal's balls probably more than everybody here. Probably more than everybody. But honestly, I'll say this in all truth. As Cars thought I hated him. I fucking love Cars. I love Chris Jackal. Chris Jackal is a tremendous human being. I agree. No, seriously. I agree. No. He yeah. he is a <laughs> and you surround yeah. yourself with people Good like dude. that. I'm not just saying that because I need Chris Jackal to put a door in my house. I'm saying <laughs> part of the reason. <laughs> because I love him. But that's the thing. And that and we have to be about it. We have to be about it. And I, I so we cut Shane's shout outs out, but Sorry. Thank you so much. Um, Sorry, Shane. Um, thank you so uh, much for coming it, back on and and addressing this. Yeah, thank and you, AB. Really, this has been probably the best show of the off season, in my opinion, right now. We didn't even have a fucking celebrity guest tonight. You guys rocked it and you rolled it, and we had a lot of passion about this football team and about everybody. Now, Shane, do you want to finish your shout outs and then I'll shout out mine and then we'll bounce. I will. Where'd the music go? Well, we, we played took through it, it off when you yeah. oh. you <laughs> came back on. Some, put it back like, on. Dramatic music. Yeah, get sit on your soapbox. <laughs> Let's keep it positive, please. We didn't have yeah. a cool Kennedy hey. uh, draft Doctor Phil this? rant music yet. So now we need to do. Uh... Okay, Remind we will, Brian. but Keeps we're going. actually going to finish the show off with Ron G's production of what TTNL means to me. With the great bullets and our girl. What's her name, Cherie? Phil. Can you hear me? This is your dad speaking. Can you hear me? <laughs> I totally forgot her name all of a sudden. Who are we talking about? Oh my god, in the in the Ranji production. Oh boy. It just went blank in my head. Bears, uh, Thunder Girl, Thunder Girl, Thunder lady. Girl. Thank you, Thunder Girl lady. Boy, you are, thank a, you. you are a dick. You oh, I am. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Not I... my girl. <laughs> Don't be rude. We're to live, her. right? I know we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start being real different. I'm gonna start being real different on here. Brad, we got a whole new show. Brad, it's a whole new. I'm about ready to see a flip switch right quick. <laughs> Uh oh! This is prison, Bra prison Bratcher. Prison Bratcher. Full AB, motherfucker. Prison Mike. Full AB. Oh wow! I don't give a fuck. Wow. Can we find <laughs> that drop? My beer pyramid. Mike. It's all Get the alcohol gas into the, the beer pyramid. Oh, uh, shit. oh, it's all good, bro. <laughs> she went full Hulk Hogan on you, right? It's there, all good, brother. brother. Leg drop. It's all good, brother. No, shamed. <laughs> I thought I finished them. Oh, you did? Who knows anymore? <sighs> Bratcher, uh, Cool Kennedy said he he sent you some rant news. Yes, he did. Can I'm you gonna upload get that to, to the yeah. BHL thing? Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I didn't want to forget that, like I did Thunder Girl. <laughs> I was hoping Cherie would help me in that. Never Bratcher, that. who did what? <laughs> the show keeps getting better. Oh my God! I want to shout out you guys for tonight. Uh, just a lot of fun the passion everybody that's helping out the network to the level with which we've gotten it to and continue to strive to be please smash that like button you fans are the reason that i and shane stay up this late and now we've added all of these other faces i'll never forget as we come up on a three-year mark the beginning of our three year right we uh 
Shane's muted because he's going to correct me on the math. The beginning of our third year. Actually, but that is like the listen, third year, right? That's here's a little right? breaking news for you, and I won't even waste the time on the drop. <laughs> yeah. Tonight is the second anniversary of the Just the Tip episode premiere of TTNL. Tonight is. For yep, real? Yeah. August 31st. Wow. Yep. Wow. Wow. And so that was, yeah, so Bratcher had his thing tonight, and that two years ago, Claudio was having his his thing because remember how nervous he was 831 i'll never forget it it. took a little while yeah (laughs) can we go over the open room claude all you gotta say is yo (laughs) yo you do this all the time guys i don't i I don't do this you do this i don't do this you said it like 11 times 11 no that way more than that you do this I was. I don't. Well, do I that. didn't want to fuck the show up for you guys, and I still can't fucking get that. What right stops you from it. doing it now? That's what I just said. I beat you to it, motherfucker. I beat you to it, motherfucker. Nice try. That was Shane. Don't you, fucking yell at me, Claudio. You've been no, here. Shane with can us. do anything wrong tonight. It's all on Draft Doctor Bully up there. I know. <laughs> no, no, it's not. no, it's Draft not. Doctor Tom's <laughs> over there. <laughs> He just did a I little bit. I will take of- all the heat. No, I st- he I really did. I think everyone could tell. I'm very happy that Bratcher's back. I want to shout you out because I, I was taking it very in my heart personally. I didn't want your feelings hurt. And like Claudio said, I'm a passionate guy and I Oh. <laughs> Brad, that's all Brasher. Oh, no, it's, not. One, no, it's one, really one, not. One, one, one is, one is, one that one comment's is. me. That's it. I'm not Which one? Listen, you guys the reality crazy. is that's the second time. When I get interrupted, I can't remember my thought. I'm getting to that age okay, now. Are you, remember that. Remember are you that walk- whenever yeah. I talk next time. Remember that. <laughs> that you forget your thought? <laughs> no, that whenever I talk, I don't get cut off or I, I don't get taken off the oh, screen. Jesus. That was oh. my problem. That was my All problem. All right. All right. Now you're going a little bit too far. We don't feel bad for you anymore. <laughs> no, don't feel bad. You shouldn't. I don't feel bad for me. Fuck it. Oh, oh my God. Top of your fucking place. Hey, guys, let's end the show. Anyway, as I was saying, I love it. Yeah. I love you guys. Claudio coming back yes. for his third year with us on Keeping It 100. We've added OG. Jackal. Cherie was a fan and then became a big part of this show. Uh, people are asking, we're in negotiations with Manscaped, trying to lowball. Shane and Jim ain't having that. That's all I could say about that. Just keeping it under. That's why Cherie ain't doing no read. Those 12 yeah, we were on a DMs. Zoom earlier. I it. fucking I left. I came back and we're gonna see if we can fuck. I'm kidding, Bradshaw. I gotta bust balls. <laughs> now you're cool, man. It's all good. Well, I'm gonna shout out. <laughs> you, can't, our newest I, I, you can you can still make fun of me all the time. It's it's totally okay. Ivan Vargas <laughs> and his family. My wife said this to me, and I'm gonna share it. Then we're out. Okay, all you fans, I love you. Become a patron. Go check out all the shows. Everybody. I'm excited about keeping it fantasy. For real. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about how many drops they're going to give us. And I'm also excited about the entertainment they're going to bring you. Love those guys. In all seriousness. Some money like tooch. We might have to add Bratcher to the show. It could get crazy. <laughs> it could get crazy up in there. But Ivan Vargas... My wife, we're t- walking, and she's like, Jesus, Claudio's had to deal with his family. Shane has had to deal with his family. We've had to deal with our family. Chris Jackal has had to deal with his family. Cherie has had to deal with her family. Now we got Ivan having to deal with his child and his family. It's been a year for this network. And all the positivity, I don't care what anybody says. That you fans getting involved with. It's not a game. It's not a joke. The power of positivity. We break balls. We fight. We debate. But at the end of the day, I could truly tell you, I love these people that I work with. 
and I love you fans. And all I'm asking is for you to continue to say and bring those positive energy to Spencer, to Riley, to Bo, to Cool Kennedy's mom, Gigi, everybody that is dealing with stuff in their life. We're all dealing with something. So if anything, I think you fans have helped this family because if there was no show, we'd still probably be dealing with it, but with less positive energy around us. That being said, let's roll this before we roll the credits and out here. One more time for those of you that didn't see it. The incredible Ron G breaking down. We asked you fans, what does TTNL mean to you in a way to showcase the network and everything we bring to the table here and you fans have stepped up and ron g has stepped up and he's taking you individually and giving you the stage it's more than football it's a family it's caring about each other of course i can mention the amazing video breakdown content between father and son witty insight and cob quickies from the smartest man Cherie's Manscaped reads, Claudio off cue on his intros, Jackal not doing shit, and even Bradshaw making disturbing goat noises. But what this network means to me is that we experience all those things I just mentioned as a family. And that's what TTNL is to me, family. This network brings people from all over the planet together to share in one love for the Chicago Bears. We celebrate wins together as a family, just as we deal with losses, player injuries, and even personal adversity together as a family. That's what TTNL means to me. Remember, football comes second, family comes first. TTNL is family, and family is everything. The tape never lies, baby. Bear down. There it is. Our guy Bullets and Thunder Girl. What a great job uh, by Ron G and you guys. Thank you for those thoughts. Um, everybody, we'll be back next week. We'll have a guest joining from Germany at 6 a.m. What's up, Keith? God bless you. Hey. Joining right at the end of the show. I love that. It's the Claudio way. Everything's been cleaned up at the party. Claudio shows up. <laughs> Let's go. Easy peasy. <laughs> Listen, we'll be back next week. BHL obviously won't be this weekend as the Bears and Labor Day. Everybody enjoy your Labor Day weekend for the cast of Ivan Vargas, the super producer. Cherie, Alan Bratcher, Chris Jackal, and the barber, Claudio, TTNL barber, and of course, the smartest man, I'm your guy, Draft Dr. Phil. Keep on keeping it 100 on the tape, never lie. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Yes! What? I love all that. Imagine the bells coming in that thing. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Then let me do what I have to do. It's open competition. Keep it 100. The smartest man. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields. <laughs> I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. Let's throw curls, curls, curls. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Keeping it 100. The smartest man. Give me a tackle or give me that. I think he can get up and go faster than a guy like David Montgomery. No. 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 Keeping it 100. One time. One time. Keeping it 100. Smart man. What? Keeping it 100.
32 is the identity of your football team. This has been a mystery for this shoe salesman for years. Don't come on our fucking show. He's trying to be a pretentious fucking dickhead. I'm going to start with a loser. Bill, good man, bitch. This is your dad's thing. Because it's going to show right up in that film, boy. Faith never lies. Prediction? Yes.